Mercedes. Good Friday afternoon. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition on 444 Radio. It's been a great week, guys. A little short hiatus doing updates here to the studio. Everything looks great. Everything's sounding great. You hear a buzz? I don't hear a buzz. I'm kind of low on my headset, but that's okay. As long as you can hear me. Getting there. Getting there. Little by little. We're getting it sorted out here, guys. You can, give us a moment. You can start the show. Okay, we're good? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, cool. Last night, we had a Thursday night football game. The good old NFL, National Football League. The Cardinals defeat the 49ers. Uh, Fitzy caught two touchdowns. He had a good game last night. Cardinals win 33-21. to Stanton threw for two touchdowns, both to, to Fitzgerald. Really good game if you're a Cardinals fan. And I got a special guest in here today with me, George. I don't know if your mic's on. Say hey. Hello. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think they're having a powwow. Yeah. Well, I'll keep going here until they get back and uh, we'll get you turned on. Let's see if this one's on. Maybe. It's a stretch. Nope. That one's right. gone to the wind, too. It's all right. No, it's all right. And I just literally pulled that whole thing off its stand. Funny. Ha. Huh. All right. So, uh, Gabbert. For the 49ers, throws for 162 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Like I said uh, before, Fitzgerald had a good game. Uh, six receptions for 81 yards. Fantasy football players loved him last night. Two touchdowns. Uh, kind of a quiet game rushing-wise for uh, for the for the 49ers. Uh, Hyde and, and Gabbert both ran for a touchdown each. And uh, Johnson picked up two TDs for the win with Arizona. Uh, now, see, this is where I could use an extra person's feedback. <laughs> 49ers are struggling, and uh, they were a three and a half point dog. Over under was 42 and a half points. Obviously, the over came through. Now, Gabbert is system wise for Chip Kelly as his starting quarterback. Chip has made the best out of what he can with uh, Gabbert being there. 49ers losing again. I said it last week, and I said it two weeks ago. I I give San Francisco a loss last week to the Cowboys, and I give them a loss this week just on merit that if they lost two more games in a row, you most definitely have to put Kaepernick in. And it's time to give Cap the start. Maybe, you know, maybe... You, you keep trying to ride this uh, Gabbert train out and want to lose your job, but if you're if you're uh, if you're wanting to keep the job, you most definitely have to give Cap a shot. Now Cap doesn't fit system wise for Chip Kelly. Maybe it's not even a a, a Chip Kelly thing. Uh, it's just the coaching realizing that his his offensive scheme, the the hurry go 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 go, so your defense is on the field more than your your offense. It's just not working in the NFL. So either you you stop start cap and hope that you have a great season the rest of the season, or you realize that your job's just over with and and uh, you're juggling. Is that one on over there? Hello? Nope, that one's not either. We're striking out here. Sorry. No, no worries. Maybe uh, maybe give a quick knock. We'll get it sorted out here in a second. But 
49ers uh, fall short to the Cardinals last night. Cardinals, uh, you know, I had them picked as one of the favorites in the uh, in the NFC, and rightfully so. It makes sense that uh, that they would be one of the top teams for them to fall short. If anything, uh, you know, that would be kind of a a surprise. Jump down here to the to the standings now with that with that win. Now Arizona improves to two and three on the season, and San Francisco, of course, one and four. Is it time to give Kaepernick the ball and see if we can get this the ship turned around in San Francisco? I would hope so. There we go. There you go. There we go. There's George. That's what my voice sounds like. <laughs> All right. As opposed to the voices that are in my head, those could be lethal. Mm. <laughs> they got me to this point so hey so far so good yeah i don't know i i think gabbert system wise kind of works for what chip's trying to do there but you, you you're not winning with him well i i don't dislike blaine gabbert but is he a starting quarterback in the nfl i mean he, he is what he is right now right right i mean kaepernick is a guy that's taken a team to a super bowl right i mean of course it was under different leadership right. you know there's nothing wrong jim harbaugh is a great coach but you would think Chip Kelly, if he's the offensive genius that he is, he should be able to build an offense around Kaepernick. And let's face it, the 49ers are not the team that they were. They are no. definitely in a real bu- a rebuilding stage. And with with Chip Kelly being brought in to, to rebuild, you know, I'm starting to second guess that. Like mm-hmm. I was saying earlier, he his his uh, system, the the run and gun, go 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 go, get the offense to the line as quick as you can. Mm-hmm. Snap the ball, get your defense out there. If you've got the defense to support that that theory, which I don't think San Francisco does, not anymore. No, not especially with Bowman going at, down now for the season. Right, you know, it, it, right, exactly. You know, I mean, it's they're they're a mess out there. It, it's going to be a very long rest of the mm-hmm. season for the guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm trying to find time of possession here. I believe the 49ers ran like nine or ten more plays than uh, Arizona. And still lost this game. Uh, just had that a moment ago, but I understand that they're that Chip Kelly's trying to bring almost a college aura on a West Coast ran team. Yes, but who was the last college coach that actually brought their college philosophy and was successful in the NFL? There, there, there's only one, and it's he, he's up in Seattle, right, Carroll. You know? But uh, Carroll do- didn't do it with offense. No, he he's a defensive mind. He builds a great defense, and he runs an offense that is well. It was in the beginning with Russell Wilson, where it was Russell. You just don't lose us the game. We're gonna get you the ball. We're gonna run the ball, and when this is what we're gonna do. And the NFL was getting away from running the, the running the ball in strong yeah. defenses. Yeah. But now it's it's definitely turning back. It's shifting that. back quick. Yeah, yeah. because I, I remember. You know, at any given time, you could list off five, six running backs potentially that could win the rushing title. There's generally two, yep. maybe three that were almost locks, but you could go four, five, almost yes. six deep, and then it did change for a while. Then it became a passing league, defensive, you know, mindset. But if they you, want, they want the NFL wants scoring. Yeah, they want to, they want to sell tickets. They yep. want to, we're, we're the show. Right, and exactly that. And you're going to see, I think you're going to see a lot more of that coming up. Uh, Either you're a, a high-scoring, offensive-oriented team or you just go that Russell Wilson yeah. route. Hey, I'm just going to get you the ball. Yes. And but look how he's developed, though. You know, if we win 10-7, to 7, but at least we get the 10 points, you know. But Russell Wilson's a star now. That, yeah. that he's a legit superstar in the NFL. And I, I was talking with the guys a few weeks back. Is Cap going to be uh, starting before the season's over or at least get some playing time. And most of them were like, ah, he'll get some playing time. I think you name him your starter. Granted, uh, Kelly said two weeks ago that he physically wasn't strong enough to, mm-hmm. to run that team yet. I think you're pulling him in the corner and saying, look, man, I actually heard I need you. That, that he's still dealing with an injury, apparently. Uh, but okay. I think they're questioning his mental state. I mean, hmm. he's he's brought a lot on his shoulders. Right. Even his mom's talking smack about him. <laughs> really? I oh, did not yeah. see that. Yeah, she said uh, she finally opened up for the first time since the whole, uh, you know, sit out, kneeling yeah. thing. Uh, Is more... it called sit gate? You know what? They should call it that. Isn't everything in with gate? It does, usually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did we start that? We could. We right. could. Let's do it. Sit gate. 
Sitgate. Uh, Mom said that uh, what he had done disgusted her. Really? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm as patriotic as the next guy, mm-hmm. but I do believe it's our right to be able to protest. Absolutely. Yep. And if you have a forum to stand up for injustice and you're going to do it, and he's taking, you know, 50% of the country hates this guy now. Yep. And I don't get that. I That's the 50% of the country that should admire him, in my opinion, because, you know, I mean, he's literally, you know, taking this all on his shoulders. Yeah. And he's not alone now, though. I mean, No, there's a lot of athletes you, coming forward. You have whole teams standing on the sidelines holding hands. They're not kneeling. I think I think the kneeling thing is, is over and done with. He mm-hmm. needs to stand up. He got his point across. And he's actually putting his wallet out there, too. He's putting a million dollars out of his pocket to help, you know, to... to yeah, to, he's been donating. I, I so saw that, especially it, with the sales of his jerseys, too. He, he was, was number three in the NFL to start the season in jersey sales. And kicking it all around right back now with the uh you know a lot of people have issues with the platform well name a platform where it's proper to protest Mm -hmm. because it's never been proper bob (laughs) bob costas uh bob costas gets it all the time on nbc because he's always on sunday night not always but he it seems like it's always but he's always the one up on his high horse and will stand and say what he believes and then everyone's like you're a sports journalist talk about sports Mm -hmm. you know what i i dislike it when he does it but it is his right to speak his mind. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's our freedoms. It's just like you and I can sit here. We can, you know. Let it as go. Lo- as long as we're not hurting other people, what does it matter? Right. So. And, uh, you know, getting back to the to the game, you know, Gabbert, I don't dislike the kid. I'm not a fan. I mean, maybe it's because of the system that he has to play with. I mm-hmm. think if he was in a different scenario or different uh, setup, right. he'd be better. I, where did Blaine Gabbert come out? Uh, where did he start his career, though? Wasn't it? Let's see here. Was it Carolina? I think so. Carolina or Tennessee? I'm not sure. I'm trying to pull this so up. This is his second stint with the team is where I'm getting, and he was a first-round draft pick. So, I mean, Gabbert's going to play in the NFL for a very long time, but he's not going to be on the field. He's going to be Derek Anderson and yeah. and all these people in, in that nature. Who's going to be? He's going to be a solid backup. You're not going to mind... If your number one goes down and Blaine Gabbert comes in because, you know, he's going to have experience. And that's what you want in your backup quarterback these days, you know. Let's see here. Blaine Gabbert career. Pulling it up right now. He started Jacksonville. Oh, was Jacksonville. Jacksonville. That's correct. Okay. Jacksonville, he started there 2011. Mm-hmm. Five years he's been in the league already. Already. Holy cow. Looking this over earlier. He's a spring chicken. Yeah, he is. So, I mean, he's still got a lot to learn, a lot to – again, it's just a system thing. I th- and how many systems has he played in now? This is a second – well, second team, but uh, – I mean, Jacksonville, there's no way he played in the same system he there. Didn't, how many coaches have they had in Jacksonville? Right, exactly. You know? Del, was and, Del Rio there during Del, that stint? He was there did from – Del Rio two, draft him? 2011 through 13. I think Del Rio was there. Did draft him then. Yeah. And now he's right across the bay from him. Right. And I was just going to say, look at the type of quarterback that's in Oakland, and it's working. Derek Derek Carr. Every team in the NFL basically basically blew it on Derek Carr not drafting him Mm -hmm. because his brother was the number one overall pick and went to the worst team in football, had no offensive line. But because his brother got so beat up, everyone passed on him was scared and thought he was going to be a bust, where I don't think – Car, his bro, older brother David was. I don't think he was a bust. That guy played until what last year. Yeah, he. I thought he did all right. And you know, they brought in Matt Schaub over there, and mm-hmm. he had to take a back back seat to Schaub. But yep. they, that again, another team with a system that was on the fence. Yeah, a lot of the times, uh, I've always kind of pulled for Houston a little bit here and there. Just beca- I do too because of the way their team left them right. when the Oilers left. Yeah, you always feel bad. I didn't feel bad for Cleveland though, for some reason as a Steelers fan. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have to throw in I'm a Steelers fan, so that's why you know I love the Browns being back though. It's good for football to have the Browns back. Mm-hmm. We need a laughing stock yes. for the league. <laughs> we do. You have to. You have to have the you know the punching bag. You know the 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 butt of every joke ends with the Cleveland Browns. Exactly. You know? Yep. 
So my guess is uh, Cap, if he doesn't start next week or their their next game, I don't know if they're on a bye next week. Or they not. have ten days off. I saw the Chip Kelly interview this morning when he was asked, okay. and he's like, and he just said we have ten days. We're not going to talk about this right now. And he looked at the reporter and he goes, "I understand why you asked the question, but he was dodging the answer right off the bat." I wonder. Well, I'm going to pull up San Francisco's schedule right now and see who they have next because maybe you you stick with Blaine one more game. And then, at, yeah. At this point, what does it matter? Yeah, you're, so you're not one a playoff and four. Team. You're not a playoff team. Not coming out of that division. No, definitely not. Not when you have the Rams shutting people down, basically, and, and their that, offense is starting to turn around. Yeah, I and that's say. that starting. team is starting to to get a little traction. Yeah, heaven forbid if you uh, you don't want to play that defense. No. Oh. Mm-mm. Oh. Let's see here. Come on, internet. <laughs> Got to kick the wheel, get the hamster rolling quicker. Yeah. All right. Their next game is October 16th at Buffalo, and then they're home against the Bucks. I don't think I want to figure out who I'm starting if I'm going into Buffalo. No. Uh, that, that Buffalo team, uh, I hate picking their games every week. Yes. Because you, know, you don't know which one you're getting. Mm-hmm. You're going to get the the disappointment, like oh, I'm not surprised, yes. but yet they beat New England, and I'm not surprised. They shut them out, right? You know, even it, it was the third string quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, but mm. at the same time, at zero on the scoreboard is for, a zero for the uh, for the Patriots, exactly. And you know what, the Patriots, that's a team there that's probably going to come out with some fury. Everyone, oh, I mean everyone. Have you seen the ESPN ads? And everyone, he's back. He's back. You know, <laughs> and they're leaving out the the Gronk piece too. So, uh, and to go into that, we'll go into some football picks here in a minute. Mm-hmm. The Browns in the last twenty nine years have one hundred and seventy five wins. Cool. Since two thousand one, since Tom Brady was named the starter, mm-hmm. he's won one hundred and seventy two games. <laughs> The Browns, in 29 years, have only won 175 games. Now, granted, they were gone for a little while yeah, there, they but were gone. still. They were gone for... And Brady's got 172 wins to his credit since 2001. I want to say I think I've seen all of the Browns' wins then. Probably. You know? Uh... You probably have, yeah. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> Let's see, you go back 29 years, so da da 1987... They were actually good teams back in the 80s. I mean, they were... So a bulk of their wins came then. They were solid. If it wasn't for John Elway, they probably have one one Super Bowl win, at least, probably. Well, you know. they'd probably have one win if they put Terrell Pryor in as their kicker right now, too. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to have him on fantasy right now? No kidding. Him playing quarterback and wide receiver? Does everything. Yeah. Utility. Does he count if uh, he's on, if he's kicking, even though he's quarterback? If yes. you don't have him as a kicker, it doesn't matter. They'll figure, they'll jostle those it fantasy points around. If you, he's like, he's a receiver, okay? Right. When he was throwing passes and mm-hmm. running the ball, all of it counts, all through the league. So whatever so he does. It doesn't matter what he does. Even no. If, even if you have him in his position spot, it doesn't matter. Do, well, I guess that makes sense he's because putting up points. they can also get points for defense. Mm-hmm. The, okay. other, the other week he had return yard points, quarterback points. He had everything. Point, yeah. A lot. He yeah. had a sack. He lost points on a sack because he's a quarterback and got sacked. So, I mean, that, that's the risk you run the other way, too. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just talking about uh, the Niners starting Kaepernick, possibly their next game against Buffalo. If not, they're home against uh, uh, the Buccaneers Mm -hmm. the following game after that. The Buccaneers, that Super Bowl team, right? Oh, yeah. After week one? Yeah. Super Bowl? (laughs) Nobody nobody thinks that anymore? Oh, that's where you are. Okay. Yeah, no, Gonzo. Gotcha. Trying to figure out what the hell's going on with the uh, headsets. They're all over the. They're all over the table. They're all over the place. It's a maze. It's, it's okay, as long yeah. as we can hear and speak, we're good. Uh, uh, myself and uh, Jay are about at our wits' end with life. <laughs> with the way the the wiring is in here, we'll have this up and ready to roll come Monday, a hundred percent. I'm very excited, and looking forward to it. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> I'm well, not even sure if I can hear you guys. That's um, okay. Oh yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you definitely. That's all that's important. Yep. Well, let's run. Uh, let's run through our NFL uh, picks for the week. See who we like. We've got Washington at Baltimore. Ooh. Uh, you got to take Baltimore all day. I think on that, right? I don't know. Washington's been turning it around. Yeah, yeah. they've been until, they've been playing well until they do very. Where well. Where is that game? That's in Baltimore. In Baltimore. Ooh. 
I'm going to have to go Baltimore. It's a home game. They just lost to uh, Oakland at home. They got embarrassed. Are they going to even be able to play? Yeah, they should be able to. I don't know. You got uh, today. That, thing, that thing's yeah. hooking back around. They're they're talking about uh, the any of the even the Dolphins game being playable by Sunday. Did you happen to keep track of last week's picks? You uh, did. Yeah, I wrote who, it down. Who won? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you in a minute with this that. Guy did. That's a loaded question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'll go with Baltimore. I like the Redskins. Redskins on the road. I'm not going to put my hatred towards Baltimore in my pick at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Jets, J E T S, lose to whoever they play. They are Pittsburgh. in Pittsburgh, and that's yep. only a seven point fa- well, favorite. What's Ray going on Pittsburgh there? is going to eat them alive. Yeah, the, the, uh, I, I don't think Revis is playing. Oh, uh, okay. I, I think Revis is out. If not, he's hobbled. So, but, but still, why is Pittsburgh only a seven point favorite? Yeah, I don't know. That Something's wrong with that. Doesn't seem right. I mean, do they? Does Vegas want to give more than a seven on? On a spread, ever. Maybe, maybe they're factoring weather. Maybe crappy oh, rain and stuff. It, I, I, yeah. yeah, that's probably it. Okay, makes sense. I mean, Levy and Bell is back. I mean, Antonio Brown, Ben's playing amazing football. He's If if it wasn't, I mean, that, that guy, he would be getting endorsements out the wazoo yeah. if it wasn't for his past. Right. You know? True. But, I mean, that's all his fault, too. So, But, I mean, he's, he's a great quarterback. That's an obvious pick, Pittsburgh yeah. at home. Tennessee at Miami. And that one's going to be, how is that field going to look? Hmm. I mean, A swamp? I, I, think that, I think that game plays definitely into Tennessee's favor if it's going to be sloppy. Mm-hmm. DeMarco Murray, at least Tennessee has a running game. Right. The, the Dolphins? I mean, they rely heavy on, on passing. Yeah. And they've got a fairly decent defense there. Mm-hmm. No, uh, their defense is solid. Yeah, I, solid. I like Miami at home. I, I'm going to take Tennessee on the road in that one. I, I just like the way that they run the ball, and I think it's it plays well in that situation. This game I'm kind of looking forward to. Houston at Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> that Minnesota defense. Oh. oh. And I want to say finally that you know Minnesota's getting tested, but they've beaten some good teams they, so far. They're, they're a playoff team that lost on a field goal. and I like both those teams. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a good game. I, I, like I think it's going to be close. Yeah, it's low scoring. Yeah, the over under is only forty. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for to see what Brock Osweiler is. To be honest with you, I mean he he hasn't he hasn't been lighting it up, and they're loaded at wide receiver with Fuller and and. Uh, I'm sorry, drawing a blank, but. Um. Uh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hopkins. There you yeah, go. Hopkins. De- Hopkins. DeAndre. I mean, they're 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 loaded there, and they have Lamar Miller in the backfield, but they have not got that offense to get going yet. Something's not clicking yet. Yeah, and I and you know, watching them, especially like when they played against uh, New England, mm-hmm. you know that that was Embarrassing. whoa, you know, and, and it, a team that should be doing it. it, it realistically, I, I kind of look at them as a mini version of New England, like a little brother. Like, well, they they are right. Their their whole coaching staff has been come from New England. Exactly. Did you hear about their coaching staff going into the New England game? No. They were petrified. Every one of their assistants apparently was petrified going into the New England game because they 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 have so much respect for Bill Belichick. They had no idea what he was going to do to them. Well, he he showed what. Yeah, he showed what he can do. That's. I mean, is he might might be the goat in coaches? But what are you got going on over there, Chief? He's letting the dog out, clanging and banging, working out. It's all good. I hate this fucking area over here. It's all right. You'll live. Anyway, now is that them showing too much respect because they're a bunch of babies? No. Or is that Belichick just being that good? No, I think yes, is Belichick that good? Absolutely. But when you go in, you already know you're beat. Then why are you even there? You should all be fired. Because my schedule tells me I have to be. You should all be fired. Mm-hmm. If you ever go in anywhere that scared of somebody, you should be fired. You you do not have the qualities to be a coach or have anything to do with coaching teams at all, period. Or is it a building block? No, you should be fired. It's not a learning it don't, learning curve? No, <laughs> Just no, no. fire him. If you are that scared where it affects everything you do. Hey, Donald. And he's already it's okay. And he's Bring already, it down. No, if he's already down. Beat, beat you without even stepping on the field. And that's a group of people against him, yes. one person. You should all be fired. I mean, I would if I was the owner of that team, they'd all be gone. Well, you're not going to fire him. No, not off of season. one game. It is New England. Come on now. I, I don't care who it is. If you are that inept at being a coach, 
Mm. You don't belong to be there. It showed on the field. Yeah, absolutely. So Houston at Minnesota, who do you like? Oh, that's going to be, you know, I, that could be a coin toss. It's at Minnesota, so I'll take Minnesota. And it's outdoors now, I believe. They don't play Be- in the dome. Beautiful stadium. Yeah. I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Houston won that game. I agree with you. It's a, that's why I say coin flip. I would. But I'd take it home. I'll take that Minnesota defense just about over anybody right now. They, Minnesota, huh? Oh, my God. That defense, it's, it's the best defense in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. They are looking. They are looking stacked. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a doofer guy, so my buddy Christian hates it because he likes to gamble on games, and he'll bounce something off me, and I'm like, yeah, well, in a situation like this, Houston's offense is due to you know get that snap, that you pop, hope. right. And if there's a team that could be a letdown and let it happen out of nowhere, shockingly, it could be Minnesota. So you're calling a letdown game? Yeah, the sleeper. Yep. All right. Houston. I understand that. Yeah. I, I don't see it with their defense. Their defense. It shouldn't. To me, Minnesota plays with a chip on their shoulder because they get no respect nationally. No. And they know if they lose a game to a lower, a lesser team, they know that they're never going to get that respect the rest of the year. Right. So every day, they every time they go out on the field, they have a chip on their shoulder. I like that. That's pretty unique to look at it that way. That's true. If they, if they lose a game at home, mm-hmm. especially at yeah. home, uh, moving forward, you pick the other team playing against them with your yeah. picks, and they don't want that. I and get that. We know we're, we know we said Sam Bradford yet, but that guy's playing some good football he's doing there. Good. I mean, uh, Stefan Diggs is he's a beast at wide receiver. Yep. So uh, I I like I like Minnesota. I like Minnesota to go a long way this year, a very long way. I could see that. Preseason, I like the Cardinals. I'm moving towards Minnesota. It, that that shifted quick to yeah, see it. Did. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they've already they're, they're starting to right the ship. They're now mm-hmm. two and three, right? Two and three. Correct. I can't believe they have three losses because they had right. they had a couple good games and still ended up losing that out. Yeah. So. Well, their their wins are against Tampa Bay and San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> the Bucks lone win on the season when they were going to go to the Super Bowl. Yep. Or low, uh, first loss. First loss. First loss after they win week one. Sorry. New England at Cleveland. This is the big hype game. <sighs> is this a coin toss game? No. No, it's not. <laughs> Brady as throws. As much as we want to say that it is. Brady throws two touchdowns to Gronk. He'll throw one to Edelman and one to someone else. He'll have four touchdowns in that game. That's oh, my guess. I agree. It's... <laughs> and LeGarrette Blunt's rushing like. No tomorrow. What, Thirty-five to ten, thirty-eight to ten. Yeah. I actually think. Range. Yeah. I actually think Jay was right. The only way the Browns had a chance is if New England was undefeated going in there, because then they'd have been. That would have been like a mental. We're up against the juggernauts, but not, already they've already lost a game. They've yeah. got. They've got the uh, the major cheater coming back uh, <laughs> for the first game of the year. And Belichick has a great history of not losing back to back games, with the exception of last season. He did it twice, but they hadn't done that in ages. I don't remember the last time they did that, but they did it twice last season, uh, they losing back to back. They're now, not losing. What are the chances of uh, What are the chances of Brady coming in and getting hurt? That's yeah. He's probably questionable for the game. You know how Belichick <laughs> likes to put him on question. Right. Yeah, because you know I, I was talk- I pointed this out. Now everybody else is on their fifth game of the year. Mm-hmm. The defense, you know, uh, 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 the pass rush, the uh, both lines, right, are now. On game five, so no matter where you are, you're playing at 100. percent You've you've figured out what's going on, and you've you're back. Hit. You're back at the best you're going to be all year long, and he is now stepping on for the first time. Yep. Well, you just took a team that's, I'd give them a grade of like an A minus, and now you put Brady and Gronk on there. That's yep. going to be a, a very difficult team to beat. You know, but I think they go down. Uh, I mean. All right, Gronk's first full game back. You're going to have... So you like Cleveland in this game? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm just saying... He's just saying in the end. I'm, I'm just, yeah, uh, yeah. Through the course of the season. Uh, I, right, yeah. They're definitely better. But even the Browns, I think, still lose this game. But I'm wondering what the chances, you know, of Brady Brady getting hit. Uh, getting hit well, that's always right a risk, yeah. Yeah, but be, he's going to he's going to be a couple steps behind. You think he's going to get... Tar- nah, I think yeah, that offensive line's going to be a... a bubble around that guy i, I agree that the offensive line is going to be killing it but no matter what happens if he had his four games worth of of doing regular games mm-hmm. he'd be in a better spot than he is right now and he's not there yet yeah but everybody every, else is who's coming against him everything you're saying just goes better for brady because you're saying that he, this is a great team for him to go up against then in cleveland 
because it's you know it's almost a cupcake because win yeah, for the, them. The worst now, one. I wouldn't say gives you know any NFL team can go out there and play, but he's going to go and play Cleveland, a winless team. His team's going to his that them that them boys are going to rally around Brady. Yeah, they the, love that guy. Missed, he could have missed the whole season and played literally the last game and come out and win. Did you see the the, the joke though early on? Is when not, he gets why, hurt. Why not rest Brady? You. Why not rest Brady and Gronk for you know three quarters of the season and then bring them in yeah. just for the playoff? You run? know what? You really don't need to bring Gronk back right now. There's no point. Let him get healthy. Watson's pretty stellar. He's up there. doing fine, yeah. and you know he's, he's been good his whole career. Brady's the only quarterback that I could see that goes into a game and has nine different receivers. You know, and. One guy caught four balls, but it was for 70-some yards because of the, the routes that they run. You don't need Gronk right now. No. If you're winning without him, let him get healthy. Let him get to 95%, you know, and then go from there. The only team that I could see that reasonably would give these guys a run right now is Pittsburgh. I, I, I would say Denver, but i still not confident in their quarterback. I'm not. But uh, That defense is very good. But. Their defense is what's winning their games. But um, – Pittsburgh, you know, on both sides of the ball is the only most complete team besides New England. I, I defensively, I think Pittsburgh's a better team. They're Off- better this year. They definitely are. Yeah. You know. Offensively, well, I think Pittsburgh's they go got a blow better quarterback right now. They mm-hmm. go blow for blow with New England mm-hmm. offensively. So you know, if they were to meet right now, uh, in two weeks from now, let Brady get a couple games under his belt. That game is coming up soon. When 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 do they play the Pittsburgh and Patriots? Really? When is that? Week six or seven? Week eight? Let's take a peek here. I it, thought they were playing later for some reason. Oh, it's it's like midway. It's not that far in. Let's take a look. You know, it, with that coming up, I give the advantage, depending on where it's at, to the home What, team. you're saying the New England game? Yeah. yeah. New England uh, Pitt? Yes. The cheater versus the rapist? That'll that's be, right. That's an epic game right yeah. there. Bend them over. <laughs> Who's bending who? <laughs> it goes both ways with those teams, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's see here. 2016 schedule. Just take it. Uh, just take it all. What do you mean you don't want to? I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Here, drink what? drink this, and then uh, we'll talk. <laughs> Is Bill Cosby in the room? Uh, October 23rd. J-E-L-L-O? Week 7. Week 7. So, uh, That's not far off. No. Brady's going to have this Cleveland game, and then he's Cincy at home. And then at Pitt, I give the advantage to Pittsburgh. At Pittsburgh, I was giving the advantage to Pittsburgh anyways, but since it's at Pitt, that's no brainer. Yeah, I, I, I really can't pick that game. Man, that'll be my heart and my head go in two different directions. So we have New England at Cleveland. I'm going with New England. Yeah, New England all day. Thirty thirty eight ten. I'll say. Evan. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to go with New England as much as that hurts, but hopefully. They'll uh, their defense will come in and and get uh, get Brady a little bit and maybe hurt him some knee shots. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so you actively root for injuries. You know, I, I, hates, hate, I usually don't. Brady hates like no tomorrow. I usually don't, and I didn't have a problem with Brady until about four years ago or so. But now it's just I'd been say about so, four weeks ago when I started talking about him. So absolutely, I, I just can't stand him anymore. Be a Steelers fan. I can't. That guy went into Pittsburgh twice in the AFC title game. And I know he goes in there twice. and rapes teams. I understand, oh. rapes them. Oh. We we, I say we as a Steelers. Fan, I, know, but, I know, I know. I do the same we, thing all the time. We, we, Don't we, we would have what two more Super Bowls if it wasn't for them going in there and yeah. doing what they did. Is they were it was amazing though. I mean, literally, if you if you got one extra one, I mean, it would have mm-hmm. been the era of New England and Pittsburgh. No one uh-huh. else matters. I mean, yeah. you could le- kind of say that anyways. But mm-hmm. well, the Giants had to be in that conversation with two. Yeah, but and Green the Bay. Di- yeah, the difference with the Giants though is. They win Super Bowls or they don't make playoffs. Right. I mean, they're 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 such opposite ends of the spectrum you know, when it comes to their seasons. It's, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, Philly at Detroit. Do well, I know who you like in this? I'm one. going for Detroit at home with the upset. Uh, Philly came into Detroit on Thanksgiving last year and got the dog walked on them. They're only a three point favorite. Mm-hmm. Philly is. And Detroit's not great, but they're not horrible either. They're, not, they're, they're, not they're missing something team. there. Yeah, Philly's doing a lot better it's than I thought they were going to do this year. Calvin this Johnson. Yeah. I thought t- uh, Golden Tate would have a much, much better season. And uh, Anquan Bolden's been doing okay. Okay. Yeah. By the way, That's guys, a- it's only it's only just now the fifth week. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So it's only been four weeks for anybody. Yeah. You know, nobody's having a great or bad season yet. You, I mean, there's a couple people having great uh, a good year. Oh, there's a couple bad but, ones. But there's, I mean... <laughs> 
It's yeah, but they can easily make it up. You still have plenty. You have twelve more games to go regular season for mm-hmm. God's sake. You know, yes. if they come out and kill it, now it's nobody's going to be talking about the first four weeks at all. Mm-hmm. But you know, but I think this is. Am uh, I trying to talk Phil- myself into this or what? I right. think is this so. fantasy football. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is Philadelphia's letdown week. I think. Yep, I agree. I it think is. Detroit wins at home. I, I, I agree. I like Matthew Stafford, too, as a quarterback. Yeah. He doesn't get enough credit for what he does. Nope. I mean, Calvin Johnson. He is Johnson, always so under, underrated. Underrated. Definitely underrated. And, you know, there he's not putting up bad numbers this year. Mm-mm. He's actually spreading the ball around. Last week was his worst week statistic and mm-hmm. fantasy point-wise so far this season, even with their losses mm-hmm. uh, and, and their, their wins. Yeah. yeah, you know, even with the losses that they've had, he's done fairly well. Yeah. Uh, I like Detroit at home, Evan. Um, Jesus, I, I think I got to stick with Philly. They go undefeated. I, I, They're still undefeated. No, I, after I don't, week five, I, I do. I think I think uh, they're way they're playing way better than I think they they've. Uh, they're playing great football, and I just I just think the Lions. Although it's know, a home game for Detroit, I know it's a home game for Detroit. I'm still going to take. You I'm want a quarter? Philly. You want a quarter? Flip it. I'm taking Philly. All right. I'm, I, you know what? The, until they until they prove they can't do it, I mean, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. I okay. think. I hear you. You know. Yeah. I hear you. You have to pick the upset at some world point. World champions are still the world it. champions, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not right. they're anything you know close to being world champions, but now this game here, snoozer game, Chicago at Indy. Mm. Andrew Luck, mm. who has he, got none. Dude. He's so bo- He's so poorly named. And that he, over he, under set at forty eight. Really. Yeah, you know Andrew Luck leads the league in sacks. <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt it. He's got 15. He's gone down 15 times this year. Oh, talk about yeah. knowing how to get rid of the ball, huh? Well, it's not. It, they, I'm they are, Andrew Luck, man. They are not the Colts of you know five, six years ago. These these Colts are not good. They don't have a much of a running game, not much of a passing game. Their defense isn't very good. You know, I mean, they, they, they have, have a, luck as a quarterback. They have Andrew Luck. They have no luck right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say the Colts at home. Not mm-hmm. going to, you know. But the Bears, I don't know. Here's the thing. Bears are not good either. Bears mm-hmm. stink. But it's a coin flip, and I think that's that's disgusting enough for the Colts. I gotta you, give, if you say it's a coin flip. So then if you're going to tell you it's a coin flip for that anyway, you might as well take the friggin' Bears. I'm, you know, it's a home game for the Colts. I'm going to go with the Colts just because they're at home. I are you re- writing these down, by the way? No, you're not. Uh, no. Okay. He's taking it mentally. You know, I'm, I'm thinking if, if you're really going <laughs> to give it to it's going to be that close, the Bears can say, we actually have a chance to win this game at home, so it'll be a marquee win for them for the year. You know what? I like that marquee thinking. Marquee win. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, for, so far for them, because right. it's still it's still the Colts and Luck at yeah. home, right? So that's mm-hmm. still a big win. Jeffries might go off in that yeah, game. Take, I like the Bears. I'm, I'm going to go with the Bears. I like the Bears in that game, too. There you go. Right. I do. Come over to the dark side, man. Now we've got, and this is going to sound crazy considering their record, the highest scoring offense against the best defense in the league. Atlanta at Denver. Yeah. Defense always beats offense. Yeah, and it's in Denver. And it's in Denver. But the the spread, uh, four and a half. For Denver? Yep. They're getting four and a half? Really? That's it. Four and a half in Denver. Oh, Nice. I'll take that. Sure. I, I like Atlanta. Do you really? Yeah. Atlanta on the road. Hmm. Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. The, Julio, it's, Jones. It's Julio Jones. Julio Jones absolutely oh. destroyed it last week. Mm. There's no way he can come anywhere near that. He had one catch the week before. Huh. Huh. That's but, right. But Atlanta still Julio put up great Jones, numbers. Julio Jones before. had one touchdown. Now, this is what kills me. Julio Jones had one touchdown, ran for 300 yards, mm-hmm. and put up, I think he got 50-some-odd points. Some odd. It was ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Now, now – uh, I had Raplesberger threw five touchdowns, three hundred something yards in the air, mm-hmm. no sacks, I think, and you know that's that so that's it, no problems. Yeah. And only ended up with thirty nine points. How is that? How is that possible? I'm pissed beyond belief. I should have of course at the end of it it didn't matter. He could have had a hundred points, I still would have lost by ten. Because uh it sounds like the quarterbacks are getting four points. For each touchdown, and receivers are getting six. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Well, no, no. What's what the difference is they get their six for the touchdown, but they don't get. Uh, they have to get over a certain amount to get any extra points. The bonus, uh, right? Oh, yeah, there so might be a bonus. Every factor time there's in there. every time there's a reception, they don't get any points for it. 
well, you would assume getting 300 yards is triple bonus. So they get, and that's why they got a couple. But right. you don't get you don't get all the all the catches don't count because yeah. like if you're a receiver and you catch, it's an automatic. You get what? Uh, one, it might be a point a, per catch. A point yeah. That's right another there. factor. Yeah. And then and then on top of it, it is uh, one tenth of a, uh, a point every every uh, what is it every yard. So mm-hmm. so you get uh, one point for every ten yards. So that means he got 30 points just in yardage. That's right. sick. Right, and then you get so it's 36. Just for the touchdown plus mm-hmm. whatever bonuses, and that's how he ends up getting where he's supposed to get. I'm gonna say Denver at home. They they pull off. Yeah, Denver at they home. Pull it off. I like Atlanta. You've got all, all day. I, I love how Matt Ryan's playing football right now. Uh, and can Denver score? They can. Okay. And here's Who, the thing. Wait, who's their quarterback this week? It's the same kid. It's um. It, it's Simeon. Yeah. Yeah. Or Seaman. Shut it's up. Seaman. Whatever. Here's the thing. Defense. It's not the rookie. The rookie's not going to play this week. I don't think so. No, it's. I think it's. I think Simeon got named starter. I'll double check. Oh, that. this. The, no, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be because the uh, the rookie's been Lynch. three and all, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be Lynch. No, I, I think, think it's, they switched him out. No, okay. Why would you switch him out? He's three and all. Well, he got, got hurt last week in the in the Bucks game. I know, but didn't. <laughs> I come come this way. You're going. You're literally going lateral. Go, right. Come forward. This chair is. It's, it's hey, a, buddy, move out for a second so I can. I can come on by. I, in my fantasy league last week, yeah, I went. Uh, the guy I went against had Matt Ryan on his bench and had Simeon. There you go, buddy. <laughs> there you go. This Say that one more time. Too well. One more time, George. Sorry. The last week in my fantasy league, uh, the guy I was going against had Matt Ryan on his bench and played Simeon. Ouch. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. You, the stuff I sent him on Facebook is really atrocious. It's, um, it's not right. But That's I, nice I'll, of I'll you. I'll keep on doing it. That's nice of you. <laughs> Broncos. Let's see here. Bronco news. I, I'm telling you, with Broncos, though, you got to take defense over offense when it's that good. At home, I, you have to take, right? So if you're just doing a slash, defense over offense. Mm-hmm. Home, so now that's two against one, and they haven't lost yet. Well, that's I'm, three. So that's three slashes right off the bat. I'm only saying uh, last last year the Steelers, right? Ben Roethlisberger threw for over 300 yards both times they played Denver, and with what the second time he did it without Levy and Bell, without D'Angelo Williams, without you don't think you know, Denver's Antonio defense. Brown. You don't think Denver's Sim- defense is doing better this year than Simeon, it was last year? Uh, did a full practice yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. he did. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's good. For that's him. what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and I would hate to see somebody lose their job because of an injury. Yeah, you know he's he's not doing. And he's that three and zero, three and zero, on this, the defending Super Bowl champs. But I'm so, still going to take Atlanta. All right, San Diego at Oakland. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just a question of what time of the game does San Diego decide to lose it and give it away. Well, they've got another high power offense there. Uh, even with all the injuries that's plaguing that team, Philip mm-hmm. Rivers has found. Uh, those two young receivers there, I couldn't tell you the names off the yeah. top of my head, but I literally went and picked them up in my my one fantasy league and mm-hmm. have started them every week. And really? between the two of them, they're putting up 30, 40 points. That's beautiful. One of them had a bad game, but the other one offset that by having a good game. But he's just, he loves throwing the ball, and these kids are going for it and going all over the place. I, I think uh, San Diego's number one corner is out for that game, yes, too. Yes, yeah. So he's, he's out. I, I like Oakland either way. I like Oakland all day. Yeah. Evan, I think you got to take Oakland. Yeah, by yeah. far, especially being at home. Yeah, and they just came off of a really good emotional oh. win on the road against Baltimore. So, and won't it be the first game of the year where they actually have a football field, not a baseball diamond in the middle of it? Is yeah, that, because oh, the right. football right. season's over yeah. or baseball season's I think, over. There. I think it's yeah. 1976. Every single time I see a Raiders yeah, game at go. home in, <laughs> in the beginning of the year, what kind of city doesn't build your team a stadium? Yeah, go go play in the Coliseum at least. Yeah. You know they I, won't let them. Have no. you seen that city? <laughs> I've actually been through Oakland in January. There you go. And I, I was told don't get off at this exit and uh, stay away from this area. Don't go anywhere near here. I went over the bridge just to go to a Walmart because in San Francisco there are none. Yes. So Are you be- serious? Yeah. Beautiful Why? city. They- San Francisco? Because it would be the most expensive Walmart in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Property is like $5 trillion a square foot. Mm-hmm. So imagine spending, out there. imagine spending $35 million a month on on a Walmart. Mm-hmm. Rent. Yeah, just on rent. Yeah. You know, Or you buy the property. Now you, you, know, you can go ahead and... You know, Pay a trillion dollars. Now you're committed, yeah. Yeah. My father-in-law owns property out there, 
Really? He's, he's like, he's like, I'm so glad I bought it like 20 years ago. He's like, there's no way I could afford it. But he, the money he makes in rent out there. Oh, I'm sure. So <laughs> we go, we go really? across the bridge into Oakland. Beautiful. Huh. Just to go to Walmart. And Good for him. It wasn't, I mean, it, it didn't look that bad. I, I thought it looked Oakland? like, Oakland? You know, yeah, it wasn't bad. I would there imagine, are parts you don't go. I'd but imagine Oakland's like, like Tampa. I mean, just, you know, the busy, busy beaver part of, t- you know, town. And then there's the bad part. And then there's the part that wants to be upscale but it right. it's not Almost quite every city is like that yeah i mean it's just bad parts and everywhere right yeah places, except sarasota but place oh <laughs> that's not true because you could say you know go up to uh where this parts of newtown that people say is yeah, really bad it's not yeah Dude, that is absolutely sarasota my my bathroom You're targeting my bathroom at no it should have to be a bad part no you should go there now the the now no, I, uh, I have i've been i used to have to drive a cab Used to. I used to drive cab at, uh, in Yellow Cab uh, about a year and a half ago. They just rebuilt all those nice buildings and remodeled. But yeah, and there's still bad parts like everywhere else. And the only reason, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying just because I've, I've heard, all right, when I was running a cab, I did nothing but run from the hours of two in the morning till six in the morning, hookers and drug dealers all day long. And you're like, oh, what? A bunch of black guys in your car is drug dealers? No, no, no. They were getting in and selling drugs in the car. That's how I know. I wasn't making any assumptions. He says this like it's a bad thing. Right. <laughs> I wasn't hookers making any and assumptions. Drug dealers. Yeah. I wasn't making any assumptions. That's and the American dream. I actually had no real issue with anybody at all. Everybody seemed to be, for the most part, okay with me. Thank God. Mm-hmm. But that's not a good part mm. of town. <laughs> so Oakland at home over San Diego. Buffalo. Oh, at- hey. By the way, I'm sorry. One more thing. Golf kit, by the way, is not the best part. With This is like number that's two. It's just the bars. That's number that's two. What, that, that's what that we found, is. We found more bodies around this area than anywhere else in friggin' uh, <laughs> uh, Sarasota. Well, they got to be somewhere. And yeah. you know, we actually just we actually just had an actual. Uh, we were joking around because it's the first time since anybody can remember we've gone six months now without finding a body in town. Really? Yeah. Probably just it, jinxed it. it right? Something's going to turn up this weekend. I Look know. out! That's right. You're going to go out to a dumpster and be like, "Why is there a shoe? Oh, it's attached to a oh, foot. No, oh, not again! You think it's a gag leg? Yeah, hanging out. Oh, it's a gag leg. All right, mm. it's just attached to a gag dead person. Yeah, you will be gagging. <laughs> Another interesting game I like here: Buffalo at the Rams. Especially the way Buffalo just came off their big win. The over under and that's thirty nine. I'm taking the Rams. The Rams at home. I'm taking the Rams at home. I'm gonna take Buffalo, Buffalo sucks. on the road. Rex can on kiss the my road. Ass. I'm in gonna LA. take Buffalo in LA. I like the Rams in this and that's a long flight. And I think that I think that plays into a lot of football games that people don't give a lot of credit to is the travel distance. That yeah, but they get there the day go. before, two days before. Still, no, they get there three days before. You're still adjusting. You're still always adjusting, and that Rams. Yeah, defense, but you're going, but you're going from East Coast to West Coast, so it's not the end of the world. It's close. You can see it from there, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, because the world's flat. Remember? I mean, you're just getting up earlier, but you're getting your games done earlier. It's much worse going from West Coast. You're not to East getting Coast. up earlier. You're getting up later. You're getting up earlier. Mentally, you're getting up later. Because you're getting up nine o'clock there, which is twelve o'clock our time. Right. Yeah. So you're getting up later. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Mentally, you're, you're mentally. Get, you're yeah. So later. you're, you know, so you're getting to sleep in, relax. Yeah. I love, I love going out west and then waking up at nine o'clock in the morning. And not to football mention, starts. And, I'm and, like they have it the best out here. Yeah, and no it's kidding. a nine o'clock game start out there. They're like, God, it's like six. It's uh, it's. Uh, yeah, seven this o'clock is a four thirty game. You know, so, so they're not tired. So it'll be one thirty mentally for, you know. But Todd Gurley has to get it start going. Yeah, you know what you, you think eventually, right? And you know what I think it's a Buffalo team that's just coming off a nice win. But what I saw in that game was like we've got nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. We lose a game, you know what? We're going to come out and be just as tough the next game, and that's that's what I see. Yeah, but that's brought to this game. That, that's absolutely right. But you, you don't think LA's thinking the same exact year? Same thing. This is our new year at the new place. All we got to do is. Put up some good games. Doesn't matter who we beat or lose. Both teams to... are in that position right yeah. now, where like, okay, we have to get going now. Well, three and one with the Rams, I think they're very happy where they are. Absolutely, and they just want to keep that going in there. And building. Rex Ryan and his brother are f- are scared to death that ed- every week could be the last week. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think they play with that. We've got nothing to Rams lose mentality. All right, cool. I like Buffalo on the road. Uh, Cincy at Dallas. Beginning of the season, I thought this would be a great Wait, game. Wait, this game is at Dallas? It's at Dallas. Oh. And now, I mean, Dak, uh, how many passes has he thrown without an interception now? <laughs> All of them? <laughs> yeah. And the last guy to accomplish that feat in his rookie season, Tom Brady. Wow. Threw, I, f- I think he didn't throw one until like his seventh game or something crazy. But uh, a Dallas team that I gave zero credit to get eight the entire games. planet, yeah. yeah. 
I, I still see him. I still see Dallas finishing eight and eight, even when Romo comes back. Eventually, the uh, the high that is Dak Prescott's going to come to a screeching halt. It, it's that kid's done a great. I'm a job. doofer guy, and that's what's going to happen. He spreads the ball around. He's another one. He's spreading the ball around. And you you got a really pissed off Des Bryant, yeah. and you got a really pissed off fantasy football. Is Des healthy? Des Bryant. Though? owner no me too i own Dez, but is he, is <laughs> no, he healthy he's not i had to go get cole beasley because i'm not wasn't sure about Dez. I thank had you run, yes. run out and get him and you know he caught one ball the one game and yes. i'm like the week that i needed to win and you caught one ball you jerk mm. and then the next game he came out and he's like literally throwing his hands up in there like dude just throw it just throw it over here well beasley leads the league, uh, leads the team in targets yeah and ezekiel elliott is definitely on whew. on point man when that leap last week, just <laughs> hurtling a defender. It's like every year I've you seen see it. You more know? Madden 1996 hurdles. That's the third one I've seen this year already. This season. It's, that, it's amazing. You know. Yeah, because what? Uh, what um, you have to see from... the defender's eyes. You have to be looking at his eyes and see his eyes going down and know that you're going to jump him. You know, you have Tampa to see Bay. It. Who is the, one, first, the second week of the year? Tampa Bay jumped him. I can't remember who. It oh, there was. was a few. There's been like four. It's been a bunch, yeah. Four or five easily. I mean, Cincinnati. Are they falling into that rut where they're okay? It's the team that we thought we had because I had high hopes for those guys in the beginning of the season. I I I really thought it came down to uh, uh, New England, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati. One of those three teams definitely going to the Super Bowl. And now Cincinnati's just kind of like. I don't know. Something's wrong. I mean, they're only is two it, and two. Is it losing Hugh Jackson? You no, know, he's a great offensive coordinator. Yeah, it he's, matters. He's a quarterback whisperer. It matters. You know, because Dalton's not a bad quarterback. Dalton's just fine. Yeah, but he's played under the same system his entire career. Right, and that 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 adds a lot to it. It, it does. I mean, it, it, we were just talking about Blaine Gabbert, who's you know going through how many different systems right. you know in his career. So, uh, it, I like I like Cincinnati. I, I hate Cincinnati, right. but I love how they play football. Yeah, their front four are spectacular, and their linebackers they they punish you. Even in the game against your your boys, I mean, they got punched in the mouth, yep. and I don't understand it. Like I sincerely thought. Cincinnati would have put up a much better fight. I wouldn't yeah. have been surprised if they won that game because it's a rivalry between those two. Was, that game was in the rain. It was it, it, was, it very, was bad weather, very bad conditions, yep, yep. and everybody dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, AJ Green and Antonio Brown, I think combined for three receptions, four receptions, it was a bad something. Game. And AJ Green's having a hell of a year too. So if he's dropping them and yeah. or not getting yeah. them where you're supposed yeah. to be, that's that, that tells up. you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Dallas at home. It's weird for me to say that. Um, Cincinnati hasn't shown me anything to take that doubt away. Beginning of the season, I, I had Cincy walking into Dallas and walking out with a good 20, 25 point win easily. I, 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 I just have to go with Cincinnati on their potential. Okay. That, that's my only reasoning yeah. for it, to be honest with you. I mean, just Potentials to hold alone. true to my 8 and 8 prediction for Dallas, I need <laughs> Cincy to win. But <laughs> the way Dallas is playing right now, Dallas is playing well. Yeah. You can't take anything away from that, that kid. He's 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 throwing to everybody. He's he's doing mm-hmm. everything he has to do to win. Even though he's, you know, well now you know you're coming up on fifth game. So now it's this is where he starts. He's mm. not quite a rookie anymore. You know, no, he's like, no. He's nobody is. Licks. Right? He, you know? Nobody yeah. is. I mean, they've won three straight. And t- take this in perspective too. So Dallas wins this one, and whoever they play next, that kid's gonna literally take the keys and hand them over to Romo mm-hmm. against everyone in the league's. Judgment because right. Jones is. Uh, well, I have a question for you. With Dak, with Dak Prescott, each week that goes on, is it more pressure, or the better he plays, is the pressure on his shoulders going down, and he's just going to start playing Dak Prescott football? I think personally, I think the pressure is coming down, even with the Romo coming back eventually. I think the pressure shifts from his shoulders to to, to Jones and. Um, oh. uh, uh, the coach there, Garrett. Garrett. I think they carry the, the pressure. Ginger. Like, okay, are we making a bad choice? Because Jones has mm-hmm. already voiced it. The second the doctors say that Romo's good to go, he's starting. He doesn't need a doctor. Jerry Jones knows, <laughs> right? The second but something you know, happens. Now, guys, how about this? What, what do you think? Now, especially since he's done so well, way more than anybody ever thought he was going to do. Mm-hmm. The guys played unbelievable, fo- unbelievable football. Den, uh, Dallas is doing way better than anybody thought they were going to do. Mm-hmm. 
So at this point, it doesn't matter if he goes over for the rest of this year. He's still done way more than he was supposed to do. Oh, no, I think you can't go over the rest of the no, no, year, I mean, though. No, he's only going to play two more games, right? Two, two more games? Y- you don't know. Well, no, you don't it's, know. Here's the thing. If he Romo, was... I'm, I'm assuming Romo comes back game eight, mm-hmm. right? So now he's so even if he doesn't win anymore until Romo comes back, mm-hmm. there's still zero pressure on him because that means he gets to go out there and just enjoy playing football, which will take if you if you don't have to worry about pressure, you play differently. And I think and that's, I think he's got zero pressure. That's what it boils down to is it you know is the pressure there? It was in the beginning because of course you want to win a game mm-hmm. and see you want to win. You don't want to be a loser. I mean, I think it's going to fall on Garrett's shoulders because you know. The pressure's there that when Romo's ready to go, you have to start him, regardless of where your wins are at. And I think that's that's stupid. stupid. Listen, I'm not a Tony Romo hater at all. I actually think Tony Romo is a very good quarterback. He's just – his body can't take the beating of an NFL season, and this is a fact now. But you have to be able to be a Bill Belichick and say, okay, this is my future right here, and Mm -hmm. it's time to move on. Thank you, Tony, for what you've done. Correct. But we're undefeated, or we're going to be, you know, if, if they're if they're six and two, when when Romo gets healthy, I don't think you can hand well, the keys over to Romo. To, I, be I, like, I disagree with you. If you're six and two, you're then, a legit th- team. Then, but then there's at least an argument. Okay. If you're a six and one, oh, eh, you know, you no, know? here, hold on a second. To play this out, they've got Cincy at home. Right. Mm-hmm. They go to Green Bay. Right. And then uh, they have their bye week. And then they're uh, home against Philly. So that's a tough stretch. Possibly you see Romo come back against Philly. Now, to fall back on your Tom Brady philosophy, Romo hasn't thrown a freaking ball all season. No kidding. And coming back from being hurt as opposed to even being suspended. Right. Big difference mentally and physically. Yes. So he's not training like a Tom Brady is during a suspension where Tom can give 100%. Yeah. He's training at whatever percent you want to label it, and then you're going to say, "Okay, Dak, uh, it's Tony's team now." Mm-hmm. Why jeopardize that? Why gamble think, with that? I don't think there's a gamble. I think if if he's got one loss, have lose the next you, three, then you keep him. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, I can I, see I, the argument I, I, right. if, if he loses more. Okay, I'm just saying for him, it's awesome because he doesn't. He doesn't at this point that he should not care at all he, he if has, he loses or not at this point. Just go, put up a good game, right. play your game, learn how to play the game in those games. That's and the most important. only thing he has to learn how to do is every day learn something to go to the next one. That's all he has to do. And that's why I think there's no pressure there because he knows in two games or three games, maybe four at best. He's gone. <laughs> he's done. So I, I don't think good. he believes that. I, I think he knows that at some point he that's his team. Yeah, it okay. might be before the season's okay. over, no, no, but I, no, in, I the, agree with you. in, in yeah. the interim. Until he loses, I agree with that. Yeah. Because he's like, there's no way. If I go without without losing hardly anything mm-hmm. or anything, then there's no – he's like, there's no way. I don't care who you are. You can't replace me if we are if we are one or less. It's already losses. done. Done deal. Jerry there. Jones said – See, saying that at week and two – it's stupid. No, no. Saying he's that not the week, coach. But you know what? Right. Saying that week one and saying that week two is a lot different mm-hmm. than saying that week eight when it's eight no. Well, yeah. six and one, seven and one at best because yeah. they've got one loss. They already have. A loss, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, seven, seven and one. Yeah. So but, seven and you know, one is think, a lot different at week eight than well, saying it week two. Saying okay, we're going to do it no matter what. And I think Romo's curtain jerk right now. He's going to get in there, start playing crappy. You know, get a get a first quarter, maybe first half under his belt, and then. Well, as a Des owner, you would like Romo in there. Yeah. Because he gets he gets Des the ball. Yeah. But as far as you're forgetting about. The team playing as as a unit, you know they're 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 gelling in Dallas. Yeah, you, and, you don't want to mess with that. And remember last year uh, when they brought in Hardy on defense, mm-hmm. and in the off season, the 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 guys in the locker room were like, "We do not want him back." Right. This guy, they were a Super Bowl defense the year before, a mm-hmm. Super Bowl caliber defense, yep. and they brought in Hardy. Hardy ruined all of that. Now you're almost talking about the same thing in a different way, though, with the with the team gelling with Prescott and then bringing Romo back. And it's a positive gel too. It's you know, a very it, it, positive, very positive scenario. You know, it's I, I just don't I don't I don't. It's a it's very tough decision. Yeah. But I would love to be in that position to be like Romo. Nope. Yeah. As a coach, yeah. I, I think I think you want, I think that's a I think that's when you're a head coach. That's when it separates you from being, you know, this guy that. You know, is you're just an average head coach, and then all of a sudden you make the toughest decision the franchise mm-hmm. has ever had in you know in ages d- in ages. You yeah. know, so and what's the what's the losing part? 
to go on Romo and say, hey, look, you're hurt. You're allowed to come back at, at game eight, but we're going to bring you back when we need you. Mm-hmm. What's the problem with letting him, getting him? Look, you mm-hmm. can even say, look, we're going to let him go until uh, start. Let's say he gets to a certain point. You go, I'm going to let him. We're going to let him go until he gets three losses. He gets okay. his third loss. You're back in. Yeah. But until that happens, we don't want to mess with anything yet. But keep practicing. Keep ready. Because as soon as we need I you. I like that thought process. Right? As yeah. soon as we need you, as soon as we see that he's he's starting to get a little bit overwhelmed or. Because, yeah. You know, the closer you get to postseason, now it's a totally different situation. Right. Now, do you want a rookie, even though he's had a great year in postseason? That's an easy sell to the yeah, team. A rookie yeah. getting r- you know, rattled. That isn't. And but that's also to lose. That's, that's when an, you put him in, and you don't you don't lose your gel at that point. You're like, guys, yes, we understand you got the regular season. That's fantastic. But look, guys, this is you know postseason's a different game, mm-hmm. and p- now you're getting the best of the best of the best of the best, mm-hmm. and it's do or die. Right. Okay. So then you can go to your guys and say, look, they did a great a great job, but this is the reason, and you and you can get it. Switched out at that point when right. you need to without ruining everything. Why well, fix something that's not broken if it's winning? Well, exactly. Let's, let's blow through these next two games. Are we set up for a break over there? Yeah, we can do it one of you want. But, okay, uh, let's, let's get do the these. next two and then take a break because uh, George has got to go. So is it one o'clock already? It's one o eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear right. Lord. Yeah. Uh, uh, last two games: New York, the Giants at Green Bay. Obviously, I'm going to go with Green Bay in that one. Giants have been a letdown for me. Uh, to is just letting them down. I mean, Odo Beckham Jr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly, T.O. I'm sorry. I like Green Bay. I would take Green Bay any day of the week. And then, yeah. of course, the Monday nighter, Tampa at Carolina. No cam for this game because of a concussion unless last minute they decide to throw him in there. They've already I, ruled him out, though, right? More or less. Once, once you rule him out, he, it's it's a done deal. It's it, it's expected that oh. he's miss, oh, okay, missing okay, the game. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I, don't I care like if, Tampa on the road. I don't care. If, you know, really? Yes. I do, too, and I wouldn't care if Cam Newton was there or not. I, I how because this is not the Carolina team from last season. It is not, and he's been running around. But it's the Buck team from the last six seasons. You know, yeah. but at least with them, it's a divisional game. It's a rivalry game. That's, that's a good point. You and know, they've had they've had some flashes of of of, of good playing. Hmm. You know, unfortunately, they've it has not been the year we want it to be already. But which it's a, does it's a Monday night game, and right. it is. That's that always. You always have to give the home team three points just for being Monday. It's four night. and a half. Four and a half. Oh wow, they're really not giving them much credit. There, no, I think that's what the expectations of Cam not being there. And I'm taking. And I'm taking Tampa Bay back up. There. And I never take Tampa Bay. Carolina did just get lit up, so I, yeah. I, I'm still going to go with Carolina because I have no faith in Tampa Bay right now. Well, there we go, guys. Let's take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk baseball and how Evan will not be wearing a skirt because I'm going to change that bet. <laughs> the Mets get a uh, upset on a walk off three run shot top of the ninth against san francisco those four games uh for you baseball fans those four games started at one o'clock today so we'll get into that when we come back from break we're trying to figure out if we can do that this thing ain't working right oh boy Mm -hmm. i hate this it's okay the new uh thing is just such a pain in the ass double click something deep breath that looks fun no brian thanks for having me no thank you for coming on it was a lot of fun yeah Glad you got to give it a test run here. Yeah. And uh, while he's figuring that out, talk about your stuff going yes. on. Yes. Oh, yeah. well, we almost Hello. forgot about Jeez. that, right? Jeez. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Starting tomorrow from 10 to noon, each and every Saturday, you can listen to us. And it's going to be the Dayton and G show. Nice. So, you uh, covering all sports? Or are you we, gonna... we are going to cover all sports. Um, probably the last 15 minutes of the show, we'll dedicate it to Kim Kardashian. Yes. <laughs> Sweet. There's some music. All right. There you go. Well, guys, uh, tomorrow at what time? Uh, 10 to noon. 10 to noon. Every yes. every Saturday, 10 to noon. Definitely tune in and check these guys out. I'll be listening in for sure. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition. We'll be right back after break. So, Evan, you want to make the other announcement? Oh, I know you're excited and happy. We do have a fantastic new sponsor. New sponsor, absolutely. We are now very lucky to have Rico's Pizza as Ooh. a sponsor for us. Yeah. 6547 Gateway Avenue in Golf Cake. They're open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. They've been there 17 years. Uh, ain't going jump anywhere. online at ricospizzatogo.com. Give them a phone call at 941 922 9604. We did find out today. That you mentioned the uh, 444 Radio or the BS show from 444 Radio, you will get 20% off your tab. Give me a phone call, guys, 941-922-9604 or ricospizzatogo.com. Hey, this is Paulie from the BS show. When I'm out and about having too many, it happens to us all, there's only one cab service I call. 
it's my right. 941-400-6606. No more three-time surcharges. No more drivers that don't speak English, don't know where you're going. They pick you up. They take you home safely, clean cars. They're professionals. They know exactly what they're doing. And when you're riding with my ride, don't forget to mention the BS Show, 20% off your ride. Chucky, on occasion, will have too much. Not me, Paul. These guys are the best. They're what you want to call. They will take care of you. 941-400-6606. My ride. It's not your ride. It's not his ride. My ride. It's my ride. Evan, we've lived here six months, and this bathroom still looks terrible. You're supposed to help me remodel it by now. I know. You just know how busy I am, though. Busy? We've got to get this done. If I can't do it because I don't have time and you don't have time, what are we going to do? I know who to call. Hello, my name is Stephen Dennis. I own a business here in town called Needaman2, LLC. My email address is needaman2 at gmail.com. My number is 941 941- Two three two, two seven seven six. Again, that's nine four one, two three two, two seven seven six. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing! What a great idea! Hello, this is Captain Sherman of Paradise Boat Tours, and if you're looking for a great adventure on our beautiful local waters, then we are the boat tour for you. Check out our website at SeaDolphins.com. We leave seven days a week from Bradenton Beach Pier on beautiful Anna Maria Island. It's fun for the whole family, and yes, we see wild dolphin 95% of our tours. Paradise Boat Tours, call us at 941-465-8624. Like us on Facebook or go to SeaDolphins.com. Here, Flipper! I'm Dr. Sean Stringer. Me and Dr. Philip Nikeo are the newest members of the 444 radio lineup. We'll cover weight loss, health issues, mental health issues, and we'll talk with top health, wellness, and personal development gurus in the industry. You can even call in with your questions and much, much more. Trust me, I'm a doctor Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 on 444 radio. Hey, guys. How we doing? This is Evan from the Bee and the Super Bad Show. I'm here with Rita from J-Dubs Brewing Company, and we're uh, in studio. How are we doing today, Rita? Good. How are you? Excellent. Hey, I know you have a fantastic brewery over there. Please tell me a little bit about it. The brewery itself is, has a tasting room. It has 10 tap lines, so you can find anything that you want from a light to a dark flavor. So whatever you like, you can get it? Absolutely. we got a flavor for you. Perfect. Also, tell me a little bit about the beer garden I've been hearing so much about. we got a big backyard out back. Uh, we're kid-friendly. We're dog-friendly, so you can come bring your family and friends and just have a good time, play some games, and drink some beer. Excellent. And then you guys got food? Absolutely. we got food trucks every day around 5 o'clock. Um, we're open Wednesday through Sunday, noon to midnight. Excellent. Hey, I hear a rumor that you guys do something cool over there on Wednesdays. We do. We have free yoga on Wednesday evening starting at 6.30. Come hang out and drink a beer and stretch it out. And that sounds like a great way to spend <laughs> a Wednesday, I'll tell you. It's 1215 Mango Avenue, Sarasota, Florida, uh, 941-955-2739. And what about social media? Go to jdebsbrewing.com and you'll find everything right there. You guys are by far the best brewery in town and we're proud to have you guys uh, as our sponsor. Come on out there, have a drink with us and we'll uh, sit around and have a good time. Cheers, guys. How you doing? This is Chuck from the BS Show. I would like to tell you about a great company, Sarasota Sign Machine, LLC, the exclusive sign and print sponsor for 444 Radio. A sign of quality you can trust, located at 601 North Washington Boulevard, celebrating six years in business and over 20 years of experience in Sarasota. If you need signs, banners, vehicle magnets, custom design, neon repair, business cards, printing, and more, trust the Sarasota Sign Machine. Look, let's be honest, you have so much more to think about when running your own business. Call us at 941-302-4275, check us out on Facebook, or at sarasotasignmachine.com. A sign of quality you can trust. Tell them the BS Show sent you. Golfgate Sarasota, it's time to eat, and there's only one place to go. Ham Heaven and Devil Dogs, 2647 Mall Drive in Golfgate. Try the one-of-a-kind filet mignon sliders or the award-winning Reuben sandwich. Voted best in the state of Florida. Ham Heaven and Devil Dogs is open Monday through Saturday till 3 a.m. So after the bars close, you can get some of the best food in Sarasota. Call in and place your order today at 941-923-2514. That's 941-923-2514. Check them out online at hamheavenanddevildogs.webs.com or on facebook.com slash hhnddd. Finally, you can get your Saturdays off to the start they deserve. 
from 10 to noon each and every Saturday, tune into the only place where you can listen to the Dayton and G Show right here on the 444 Radio Network. Weekends were made for sports, and that's exactly what we will give you. Hi, I'm George Bennett of the Dayton and G Show. Other sports talk shows might know what they're talking about. Dayton and I just think we know, and that makes us very dangerous. So put a little danger in your Saturday mornings from 10 to noon right here on the 444 Radio Network, the Dayton and G Show. This is Chuck from the BS Show. I wanted to take some time to talk about a great charity organization, the Honor Flight. This organization flies our veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit those memorials dedicated to honor the service and sacrifices of themselves and their friends. Please come out and drink some beers at Hurricane Mike's on the last Saturday of every month from 1 to 6. Hurricane Mike's has a guest bartender at each event, 50-50 raffles, liquor baskets, and silent auctions. The bartenders even donate all the tips they make that day. Hurricane Mike's is located at 2639 Mile Drive in Gulfgate. Last month, Hurricane Mike's raised over 1100 bucks for the honor flight. From everyone here at 444 Radio and Hurricane Mike's, we want to thank you for your support of our vets. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition on 444 Radio. Before we jump into the the playoff picture here for good old Major League Baseball, touch on some hockey news here locally. Uh, It was announced yesterday that uh, Tampa Bay Lightning superstar Martin St. Louis will have his jersey retired, uh, his number 26 retired for the Lightning, the very first Lightning player ever. I am very excited. Do they say when that's going to happen? Yes, and congrats to, to Marty. Uh, listen to his phone interview this morning. That's going to happen January 13th. It's a home game, obviously, against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Is that going to be... Oh, all right, so it's, it's uh, December 3rd, uh, January 13th? Mm-hmm. All right, very cool. Is, that a reason, is there a reason why it's, uh, they're doing it that game? Yes. The effing head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets that took Team T- Team. USA to zero and three in the World Cup. Yes. John Tortorella. How so his form, his? his former coach of the Stanley Cup championship team from two thousand four. He co- he was the co- head coach for the Lightning. So that, why does he get to say when he's going to do it? He just doesn't get to say. That's when the Lightning. That's the Lightning. That's the game that the Lightning pick. So oh. so it's more or less like a tribute homage because Tort's the last guy around that's relevant right from that era because Danny Boyle retired. So right. Uh, you always try to pick an up a team, either a that rival. That means something some way. Yeah, and that's why, because Tort's the head coach for that team. So, And uh, and for you Lightning fans, uh, Nikita Kucherov is still unsigned. Now, with him being a restricted free agent, the only – it's rare that it happens that uh, no offer sheets have hit the table, meaning uh, – a team could say, "Okay, we're we're taking a play at Kucherov. We're going to offer him uh, five point two million, because where the the Lightning are at right now, they're only offering five. But say if the Red Wings came in and offered five point two, then Tampa's got the option to match it. They can match right. any deal on the table. Now the problem is, uh, now why wouldn't you go a little heavy and try to get a, a Kucherov? Because Kucherov was the leading scorer for Tampa last yeah. season. Yeah, and was lit it up. Lights out in the playoffs. Now what you risk as another team, one, uh, most te- there's not a, a lot of teams that have $6 million to $7 million left in cap space to grab Kucherov. Right. But if you did, Detroit Red Wings example, um, and come in and say, okay, we'll give you 6.1. And he says, okay, fine. Now, since uh, Tampa's got, since he's a restricted free agent with Tampa, that means you have to give up three draft picks for that price match to, to, to sign Kucherov. So not only are you getting him, but you're giving up three draft picks. You're giving up a first, second, and third rounder to get him. What, the your, Red Wings are? No, that's what the, any team that would try to sign him at that point. Why do you have to give up three? That's how it works. That is so weird. It sucks. So it's not just straight money. Bingo. So, so realistically, no matter what happens, Tampa Bay will get him way cheaper because it's not going to cost him three three players at the, on top of it. Right. That how the hell does it, so nobody's going to pay for that? Right. Nobody's going to do that. It's the last time it happened was, man, I forget the player's name. Um, no, I do remember it was Sean Sean Gannon. He went from Edmonton to Dallas. Dallas gave up the three picks. And they did they go to the Stanley Cup? When did they go? 
they might have fallen short. But it, it was a good move for them because they needed a, a, a Sean Gannon at that point. And uh, he, it, it was worth the pickup. So, you know, is Kucherov uh, a restricted free agent give up draft pick worthy? He's coming off one of the best seasons of his career. Um, you know, immediately, I no. But uh, the the uh, the Lightning definitely haven't re-signed him yet. Uh, Iserman's been in discussions with his agent several times, and they only have six point two million of cap space, and they're offering him five. So you know, it's obvious that they're trying to squeeze every penny out that they can. And I said it a couple weeks ago: you've got six on the table. Give the guy six. Just yeah, make it happen. Quit, quit messing with the with this guy because at some point, I mean, like I said, there's nobody, there's not enough teams out there that have six, seven million available that are willing to give up draft picks to to sign this guy. Yeah, why would you? I mean, and here's the thing: he's a great player. Mm-hmm. He's a great player, but you're sacrificing your entire future to get somebody who is already how many years he got left? He's proven. All right, he's proven he is. But now, how, I mean, say say like the Rangers. You know, the Rangers are are high in the list of uh, Stanley Cup finalists. To give up a first round pick, you might be pick number thirty. Right. You know, in a second round pick, you might be number twenty six. Right. Know, dep- you, you might have higher picks, so it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. And you still have the minors. Yeah, if you got a top five pick, though, that's then, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Yes. Uh, so. Kucherov will be wearing wearing a Bolts jersey not too too much longer. They'll make it happen. They're just trying to squeeze that extra six, that that extra million to make it six. Kind right. of stupid. Just Tampa, just buckle. Come on, Stevie, do the right thing. Keep the core. Just, no kidding. I mean, keep, keep it all together. And here's and the thing: the, the one thing the I can't, I have to say that I do praise since the the sale for the new uh, for uh, Tampa Bay, since the new owners and all that have come in. We really haven't really worried about too much things like this. No, not you know, at all. There's not been a lot of money ish- issues for should you get it done or not because they're always like we need the team better. We're going to get the people to do it right. right. So uh, maybe we'll give them a little bit of rope. It, maybe, maybe it's just I don't know. It's one of those things like the holdout. You know, what is he going to eventually sign for? If they finally sign, say okay, we got him locked in at five point five. Come on, man. You know, that that was the difference. The point five just get it done. Uh and Kucherov stop with the holdout. Just say, hey, you've got six point one or six point two left in cap space. Give me six. Give me five point eight. Whatever. And w- chalk it up, get it over with. Yeah, get it done. Get it signed. Yeah, because preseason preseason started. So yeah. you know, it now it's already a week and a half in two weeks in a week two and a half weeks, in, right? Yeah, we're two, two weeks. Two weeks in, yeah. So uh Let's see here. We uh, the uh, NBA preseason started this week. It started last night, actually. More things I don't care about. Yeah, <laughs> and I, right. and you know, I'll I'll just touch upon that, saying that it started. So for basketball fans, um, you uh, you got something to look forward to here pretty quick. And the odds on favorites for the NBA Finals once again is Golden State and and uh, Cleveland. No surprise there. Do we have this uh, microphone on over here? Murdoch just stepped in. Yeah, it's on. Hey, yo. There he is. We've got uh, preseason basketball kicking off. Brian, did you see the Golden State Houston? No, Golden State Clippers preseason three days ago. I did not. I'm not a big fan of the preseason. It's we've, We spoke about you know my <laughs> allegiance to the once upon a time NBA that I hold so so dear to my to my heart. It was a it was a fifty point game in the third quarter, five zero, you know the number after forty nine. They had a fifty point lead. It was it was something to watch. Fifty points, five zero, forty games. And they squeaked out a win last night, Golden State. And that's that's just going to be it. You know, how the, do you get up fifty points by the third quarter? You don't miss. Literally, I mean, not to be a it's, smart aleck it's, response. It's it's pro basketball. They don't care. It's pro basketball. I don't care. Golden State and Cleveland are the two odds-on favorites to go to the finals for a third time in a row, followed by San Antonio, the Clippers, Boston, Oklahoma City, Toronto, Atlanta, New York, and Portland rounds out the top ten. Utah and Detroit, the next two to follow. 
Do you have a favorite, and do you have a dark horse in both of the of the sides of the basketball? I think it's just clear cut, man. It's just going to be tough. I mean, secretly, I always got a little pull for the Clippers there. My other LA team, of course, I pull for my Pistons. But well, you like Golden State to to win from that side, let alone the whole deal. Yeah. But if you thought they were the favorite, who is your dark horse from the Western? Pick a team. Mm. Gun to your head, pick one. I'm taking Portland. Just out of revenge. Give me Portland. Oklahoma. I'm gonna take Lillard and the and the rest of that squad. They're they're claiming they're gonna put up 115 points a game there. I think that they are average. more than just an anomaly. That's actually a good squad. I think they do very well this season. You put them back ten years ago and they may fight for the the top, but that Golden State you know is yeah. is something. San Antonio also is it's just your the winners. And just give you a quick sports update, just be, or a score update, just before we jump over to baseball. Uh, top of the second, Toronto and Texas are both tied at zero. Uh, one o'clock game kicked off, four thirty, five thirty, and a nine o'clock game. All four playoff games are tonight, today rather. Um, and then uh, the NCA uh, poll came out today, top twenty-five preseason, and right at the top, of course, none other than Duke. Duke is Duke. Duke is not going they're anywhere. On more, they're on TV more than Leave It to Beaver reruns. Yeah. <laughs> that that sound bite from years ago. Kentucky. Duke n- is Duke. Number two. Kansas, three. Villanova, four. Virginia, five. North Carolina, six. Oregon, seven. Wisconsin, eight. Xavier, nine. Michigan State, ten. Gonzaga, 11. <laughs> Indiana, 12. Arizona, 13. Louisville, 14, Purdue, 15, St. Mary's climbs up to 16, uh, Syracuse, 17, Creighton, 18, West Virginia, 19, Rhode Island, 20, Kentucky, 21, Maryland, 22, Iowa State, 23, UCLA, 24, and rounding it out, number 25 is Florida State. You know who we don't see on that list at all? I, I could pick one. I could, I could, I could pick 12 yeah. right out of the SEC. The whole damn conference. How do they get left out of that? They didn't get left out. We all <laughs> no. We they all, were we kept all acknowledge out. Our, our, our strengths and our weaknesses. <laughs> ACC, you know, ACC is, dominates is, this list. That's not true. Kentucky's in there. Kentucky's in there. Yeah, yeah I mean, there. they are. And, and where, where our, are Arkansas? Kentucky? Kentucky was seven. I oh, think. two. Sorry. The, the SEC will number two. We'll, you we'll sprinkle. Two. Too. Okay. We'll sprinkle Sorry. some teams occasionally. You get an Arkansas once in a while. You'll get a South Carolina, Florida, some, LSU. The kid that was drafted. You know, they have a sexy team once in a while. It's just they know where they're. They they know what sport. To, and it's it's to early. Focus on. I mean, it's, it's preseason. You once you get just through, go pay attention to football, Mister SEC over there. Uh, actually, no, because I've watched plenty of. Uh, I said I don't like pro ba- basketball. I love uh, college basketball. Oh, you do like? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I, college basketball. I absolutely adore. Matter of fact, um, that's why I'm not worried about it. You're you're absolutely right with the SEC. We we do we take it on the chin because let's just face it ACC is the, that's they are king when it comes to it yep. you know you got uh, Pac ten they they put up a lot of uh, or Pac twelve they put up a gr- bunch of great teams we don't need to start mm-hmm. off there we just end up there and that's all I care about there you go you know the the in that tournament the ACC is always represented well and not just at the beginning of the tournament last year last year last year the year before that you know it's it's eight of the twelve it's it's ten of the sixteen that's are, that's right are just and it comes to, it's, it's strictly recruiting. If you're going to basketball and you're going to be recruiting, you got ACC gets the top hand. The ACC comes is to football, the SEC of football you uh, got and SEC, basketball. You go to football, SEC has the top That's hand. That's right. That's just the way it is. Yep. But th- does that mean that occasionally a Florida State doesn't put up an okay game in in football? It's not yeah. true. But you get Roy Williams and Coach K that are, you know, recruiting through Carolinas and, you know, the southeast of the country. You're not going to get – the other, you know, the coach from Colorado isn't going to get a chance to to pull those guys. It's just like right. football. It's just the way it is with Saban and the rest of them. And you know, and here's the thing: we've got a relatively new coach at Florida, um, so it it all depends on on how it, it it all forms comes together. Of all the teams in the SEC, Florida does represent. Uh, they get top billing. Oh yeah, you know from that from that conference, they yeah. won a championship too, and back to back, they've they've done real well. They're, they always represent. So there's there's your. There's, there's and your then you always have Kentucky. You can't, of, of course, you know, uh, it's not the Kentucky that it has been in the past, mm-hmm. but it, it's going to go ahead and it, it'll, it'll be okay. We'll be we'll end up with four, three, four teams in there at least, and then always one or two heavy hitters. There always. You go. And I know it's not 
of your interest, but I do want to bring this to, to, to the table. The WNBA Finals will begin Sunday. Did we the get be- some of those numbers? The best of five series. Uh, it, going back to what I was bringing up about that originally, right. remember how I, we discussed how they changed the playoff format? Yeah. That number one and number two team are finally meeting in the NBA fi- WNBA Finals. Oh, there you go. At, at, uh, L.A. versus Minnesota. So the, they changed the formula this season, and it worked. We see and, the two best teams. And you say teams. that was a better way, right? I thought so, see, yeah. See, I don't, I don't watch that crap, so I can't. I, well, can't, it, just, well, I, I shouldn't say it. I don't watch that sport, so I can't but come out and say what's better or not better Not necessarily it. just for WNBA purposes, but in general. The two best teams, one versus two, whether it's NHL. I mean, college football, mm-hmm. now that we have the playoff, but in general, even with the BCS, we didn't see one versus two. We saw one and three. But finally, in a sport, we see the legit two best teams in the championship. See, and that's true because that's, it's, even in, in, in a, a college football, you probably won't see number one. One and two. two that and might you, not You can't happen. because you've got championship games. Right. And you live and die by championship games. Yep. And that's SEC's all you loved our championship game. And I told you, me, the SEC championship game for me has always been more important than whatever happens afterwards, with maybe the exception of the national championship game. Mm-hmm. But you got to get through that first to even get that. Right. Right? Exactly. So... And, and I do, I, I, and you will not get probably number one and two, but you get number one and four, you get number one and six, right. or number one and three, number one and two and know, four, five, two six. and three, yep. You know, unfortunately, a lot of times, especially when it comes to the SEC, and you know, sometimes well, with the Big Ten and Big 12, occasionally, Big Ten, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, you will end up with two great teams that yeah. have to knock each other out. One of them goes, yeah. You know, you know, Michigan, Ohio State, plenty of times. One of them has to they go. They could have been number one and two, and one has to go. Yep. Same thing, you know, Florida, LSU, somebody, Florida, Alabama. Yep. Alabama, you know, Georgia, somebody's got to go. You essentially have the national title game before the national title yes. game in those conference titles. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the most enjoyable football to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that SEC championship, yep. it's a poor man's championship. It really is. Championship. No, that's fun to watch. And you know, and that's not even true. Sometimes, and multiple times, it is bigger than the championship. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it's, it's uh, the better teams. Auburn and, and uh, Bama that gun, one year. Absolutely. Put and here's the other thing also. Mm-hmm. Almost, and I, I can't speak for everybody, but when it comes to the SEC, and I really when it comes to Mizzou and A and I, I don't know if it's true with them yet, but definitely with the, the guys who have been in the SEC for a long time, we live and die with the SEC uh, championship game, and would not give that up, even if that meant we could make it easier to get there. Right, we would never do that because no. we love the SEC championship. You earn and, it, and that's it, and you absolutely do. Mm-hmm. SEC championship game is my favorite game to watch all year long. Especially if Florida's in it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So just just to prove uh, that playoff picture point, you know that I brought up a couple weeks ago. Finally, we you know in a sport we we see a legit one versus two, and it's cool to see that. Yes, it's only the WNBA, but it's something well, you don't that have to take away from it. That it I understand it's, what you're saying. It's something that maybe the other sports out there can acknowledge at least and say, you know what, maybe they might have something there by having the two best teams in there in their sport playing each other for their for their title. Hey, whenever you're having the two best teams play each other, no matter when it is, it's never bad for the sport. No. I don't care if it's the first game of the mm-hmm. year or the last game of the year. One versus whenever two. Whenever one's versus two, yep. that is a great thing. does not matter. And then uh, let's shift gears over to baseball. Jay, uh, man, I, I went skirt shopping the other night, and um, – I'm changing that up. I'm I'm not going to stick this guy in a skirt. Well, I have a heart. What well, did no, 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 I'm going I'm to give him something else different. Oh, so tell me what I Are missed. you changing it? Do you want to walk around in a collar and a skirt? Because I don't want to walk you around in a collar and a skirt. And Here's the gate. thing. I want to do whatever's best for the show. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's never best for me. Uh, what is your proposal? Let me see what your proposal is first. Let me try to figure out. Okay, so Catch me up to speed Murdoch first. missed all right, this. All right, let's, let's go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Jeff Murdoch, Murdoch. First, first round of the playoffs between the wild card game between oh, um, no. San Francisco and the Mets. Bumgarner is on mound, and oh, I, no. and I was like, yeah, San Francisco is going to go into New York and win. And you know him being a Mets guy, no, it's not going to happen. So we we're trying to figure out a bet, and I was like, you know what, San Francisco way, wins. You have to you... you have to sport a frohawk. Oh, Let me shave your head into I'm a sorry. frohawk. Let me just just by the way, uh, when Thor got pulled, uh, he was doing way better. Because he only gave up two hits the entire game. I, I could talk about that game for an hour with you. And a walk off home run's a walk off home run. They that was a, off the bench. That yeah. was tough because yeah. you know they they did well after him, but you have to stay with your horse. You, 
I he agree. had ten strikeouts through six. Well, and what a about half, those you know? two bases hits. loaded? And two I was hits. like, oh, here's a win. Base hit. Base hit scores two runs. Yep. I'm guess, winning. Guess what? And gets out of that jam. Gets, gets out of it. And he gets out of it. That's because the fr- San Fran rode bum. I mean, they knew that. The guy's got his, zero earned okay, runs in his in his career on the road. Yes, ever, like ever, ever. So God I mean, couldn't have pitched a better game. Sorry, and both of those coaches. Both <laughs> well, at of that those, point, Thor was pitching a better game. They they have to keep Bochy has to keep him in and match with Bum. At I know. that point, you have to have until the, he gives up a run. Until something breaks. Right. Until some kind of there has to be something to give before either coach because they it's a chess match. You yep. all know that. Yep. I mean, it's a baseball. And he so, broke. He and, broke. He, he broke. Home run for Toronto just now. Breaking news. Toronto just hit a home run. Let me Two guess nothing. who. Hold on. Stand by. Too low. Yep. Baha! Yep. What do you know about those special powers, son? Yep. Yeah. Just hit a two-run home run. So. Man, one of nine chance. It was just So, luck. super long story short, we're trying to come up with a, a good bet from shaving eyebrows or waxing eyebrows to... It boiled down to the loser got walked uh, by the winner on a dog leash... In a skirt of some sort or some outfit, jacked up outfit. outfit we we're, gonna, we're gonna do the plinko board, yeah. Hmm. And uh, when I that three run home run around golf game, the by plinko way. board of fate. <laughs> yeah, a during pain, a, yeah. a whole football game on a Sunday. <laughs> that is vicious. During a whole game bar hopping with one holding the other one on a leash. All right. So after, we also said that. Uh, well, this was after you left, but we also said because it's a dog chain that we get to drink the entire way through. That's fair. But I have to drink out of a dog bowl. Oh wow. That's not much of an insult, though. Don't half step. It doesn't wow. sound Look like at Brian, a like, I'll drink out of a dog bowl with yeah, you. Yeah, drink, yeah no kidding. I'm, I'm, Give me a straw. Let's well, go. We also Where's the said, shame in that? We also no, said, no straw. No, we also like, said that I can't. Lap it up. I can't. I can't sit there and, and nurse either. So I don't look like an idiot. I have to match every time you have a drink. I have to drink. No. But, he has to lap it up. but of course, this was. Yeah. I wasn't saying this when I, I already knew. I was doing this when we said this before the, the game was. So played. after after that three run shot goes off, I. I jump on my phone and I screenshot a, a University of Michigan cheerleading outfit and send it over to him. Then I'm thinking, you know what? Do I really want to be walking around with a dude on a chain in a skirt? Because how gay are we going to look together? You're not gay. Your boyfriend is. Right. I, mean, I was thinking about you know, dressing up in German garb while walking him around. Probably. Yeah, and I, then I brought that up, too. You're going to have me in a collar. I'm going to look like your slave. I'd be fine with that. See, that stuff doesn't bother me <laughs> That's at all. some Django stuff going on there. You know. No, you know what? Check this out, because right off the bat, that is not racist between you. That has nothing to do with race. So if that's what you see and that's what you think, you're the racist one, so I don't care. You'd, you'd probably have people wanting Says to fight you. Says the president you. of the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> we never even thought about the race thing until after. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, but oh. not a good idea. I, I would like to shift idea. it. Maybe I would like to probably go back to the Frohawk thing. The I hair? Was, I was going to say hot peppers, but he doesn't do well with hot wait, stuff. Wait, wait. He won the bet and is backing out of punishing you? I don't even. That, I my mind is blown I don't want right to look. Now. I don't even understand. I don't like want to see look. this guy's identification. So let me get this right. So you're worried about what your what your biggest problem is? You don't care about me. You just don't want to walk around with me with a dude in a skirt. He's more embarrassed than you are. There you, you go. Yes. Be... Now, now you're getting to the to the core of it. And what's the BS show's uh, slogan? You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome. You don't have to walk around in a skirt. Yeah, but he's not going to like that. He's going to bitch about how he didn't have to do it. That's right. Well, here's the thing. You want? It's I'm open. serious. He's a he. he so what's what's mm. your counter? Or because it's got to be good for the show. Or an outfit of some sort, correct? Yeah. It, well, what, what we were going to do is everybody was going to put in. What everybody gets two choices, or or well, depending one on how many outfit people. Choice. Everybody gets one outfit. Cho- and by the way, I'm going to get an outfit choice too because I got I got to be able to get out. So no, there's no getting out. You lost the bet. You oh can't no, it's get just out. random though when it comes to that. Everybody's picking their their yeah, thing. You can't yeah, get but out. You can't put you can't like get out. fully dressed clothes right. in there. I'll still be on a chain and drinking out of a bowl. I'm not. No, getting out no, of no, it. no, no. You can't get out of it. Oh, can't don't even start. What are you, Polly? Now we, no, but I'm just. We always give a. a I a gave one me out. an out by just going with the. I'll frohawk. have a one in. I'll have a what a one in eight chance of of the out. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that odds. If it was one on a hundred, maybe. I guess if he's still wearing the leash and he's still wearing drinking out of the bowl, that's still pretty embarrassing. Drinking out of a bowl, that's for shame, for shame. And, and I, I can't wait to see that. So I'm looking forward to it. And here's the thing, also, it's it's I guess everybody we're gonna drop it. You'll have your name in there. If you get yours, then you have three outfits you can pick. And then if I get your, I get to pick one of the three outfits I get to wear. See, you're still picking. Right? Isn't that the way no. it was going? No, I that's think the way we said I, it. I like the fact that Ev lives by a code. You know, if he loses, he loses. If he wins, yeah. he wins. He's about to take it in the face. I know. In the face. Well, that's the thing. You're only as good as you are for your word. And I'm Amen. Like, unfortunately. And un- I applaud and you, And sir. also, unfortunately, this would be way better for the show. 
which is absolutely horrible. But we did that on your show. What's that? The bat. I know. Yeah. Holy stipulation, Batman. Yeah. Trust to... me, I'm still going to end up. It's going to be ugly. But you're really worried about me and a, you're me walking? Wa- walking someone on a leash. Really? I'd now, rather you just you, have hold a. On, hold on. Let me let me let me back this up a little bit. Would you have a problem that with someone else walking him then? That way, he's still getting the embarrassment, and you still won the bet. And you could even be at the bar, but you don't have since you're so ashamed. Yeah, there's the well, who's going to walk him? Anybody? You could have. Let a, me tell you right now, n- Chuck or Polly would would kill each other. All right, over fine. The wait, wait, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Absolutely not. This is a bet between me and you. That's the way. And that's. The way I'd rather supposed. you wear a sign, a handwritten sign on your back that says, "I lost a bet. I'm a loser. Or I'm a loser. I lost the bet," or something along that lines, and dog walk you. Are you a man or what? Man? Yeah, if you're gonna, I am. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do, a, if you're gonna do something, you do it. You do it. You don't half-ass anything. I figured he's gonna come in here and do a victory Deion Sanders Me dance too. in your face, and instead he's like, "I don't want to do anything." That's Not off. my style. No. What? I'll, I'll let I'm you know sorry. that I won. I've heard some yeah. stories from you, buddy. That is absolutely Actually, this not like right that. here is your style. Uh, <laughs> you know, but here's the thing: there would be no issue if he wasn't worried about feeling embarrassed. That's yeah, what the problem. Let's was. let's get right to it. So that's what it is, and that's okay. So. Hmm. Ad- admission that's a quandary I, I, I would have never in a million years thought this way this was going to go nope I'm a little bit shocked now we're going to have to do it mm. fine there you go misery loves company and you're miserable so if, let's get this done if we're doing the, the dog thing then you shouldn't have an opportunity to get out of the outfit with your own choice you lost the bet so what you're saying you should get to pick the outfit no no he says I should be able to have you my should... cup in there to say that I can yeah, wear something he can't else. save his ass on this one all right, so hold on. So, stip- dog so Evan, Evan, the stipulation is he'll go through with the bet, but you have to not have an out. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm completely that. confused, though, because he wanted you out completely. So you think he if want you to if have we're that in there? Go all the way through. Then we got to go all the way through. Well, here's the thing. Even if I even if I got to wear my Florida stuff, I'd still be in a collar drinking out of a. But that's bug, not a big deal. You, the point was a goofy ass outfit, whether it be a, a skirt, a belly shirt, a uh, diaper, diaper. I never have a chance to get out of this problem, do I? And I just don't shut my mouth. So just let it go away. See? Do I? <laughs> God damn. My problem my entire fucking life. Well, we've got a couple Sundays to get it sorted out. No, it's got to get done immediately. Remember? We, we're picking this week and we'll do it next week. I can't do it this Sunday. Oh, you can't no, do it this Sunday? I thought we were picking this week, though. Yeah, we're picking, we're picking this week. Today, I, I thought we were picking today, but yeah. we, we could plan it down the line. I thought yeah, that was it, if it, it can't be this Sunday. That's for sure. Maybe the next one. If not, definitely the one following. It'll be within the next three Sundays. All right. I might have something to do the fo- Sunday after that. Yeah, my my next two Sundays okay, are Okay, so within the next three... So let's... Let Worst me, let case me scenario, we're, we're talking the Sunday before Halloween, which would be the 30th. Uh, if not, then the first Sunday going into November. I'm not doing that after the Florida-Georgia game. Eh, what the hell? Yeah, okay. So we're talking end of the month. <laughs> Worst case. Okay. We'll come up with a better uh, timeline. All right. Uh, Boston gets Shit. beat last night by Cleveland. Uh, the <laughs> I'm glad to see Boston get beat. I'm a little bitter with those guys. Me too. Five to four, they lose to Cleveland. Toronto defeats uh, Texas ten to one. They they whip Texas in Texas, and they're winning again today. So what's what's the formula there? It's it's who's throwing the ball. You can you I you can give a lot of credulence to a team and how they're playing toronto you know rose up in the the, the wild card game you know, in in a in the visions of joe carter you know they they really they did some things there that it's still who grabs the baseball someone's gonna rise to the occasion and someone isn't you look at cole hamels yesterday do you know that cole's record in his last eight games he was one and one with an era of seven and a half so that's not good baseball he is a pretty good postseason pitcher, but he doesn't own Toronto, and that's what you have to look for when you're starting to break down these games. I mean, history is, is history. I mean, if I beat you in basketball eight times on Sunday afternoons, you can bet that next Sunday afternoon you're going to be an underdog, and for a good reason. There's something about Sunday afternoon that gets you. You know, Hamels didn't have it, and today, would they have you Darvish throwing the ball? You was, uh, I believe he, he, he was the, the starting pitcher. Me? <laughs> you What'd you say? <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> that's messed up. I don't think he's Chinese. Eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the deal there. Uh, you know, in in Boston, you know, Porcello, he gave up three home runs in an inning. 
He hasn't given up three home runs in a game in since when? The, yeah. You know, there is something I'd like to bring up real quick. When did Canada or Canadians in Toronto become such scumbags? When did this happen? What, what are when you referencing? Their, when their alcohol percentage was a point and a half higher than our beer. Yeah, but, when. but it always has been like that. Yeah, no, you know, now all of a sudden you're throwing stuff at, 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 at people in the field. But that they're in Texas. That game he's uh, referencing. He's uh, yeah, talking yeah. about the wild card game. It was the, the wild card oh, game. And then okay. last night, yeah. what was it? Uh, the night of, yeah, the wild card game mm-hmm. with playing against the Mets. I mean, when I was watching the Mets stuff. And the game before that. Yeah. Dude, the. It, the, the craziness. And then last year, they got in all that trouble for being total scumbags. They did it last year. They did it this year. It's what is just the deal? what they do, man. They're, they're rowdy. And they, they serve cans at, um, at the in center Toronto. up there. Mm-hmm. And that's a weird story about why they throw a pitch at, at 07, 7 after the hour, but I digress. The, the cans, they, they sell a can, and it's a missile. It's a projectile. I mean, you have a 16-ounce. Have you ever thrown a beer? Let's be honest. Have you ever thrown a 16-ounce beer? Yes. You can do a lot of damage with a 16-ounce beer. Is that beer. worse than a bottle, though? I think that it's worse than a bottle. Yeah. Really? You know why yeah. it's worse than a bottle? A bottle can break. A can's not, a full can is not going to break. There's That's, no give there. Yeah, but I think... I and those know. bottles are not glass. Those bottles are plastic. Oh, yeah, the bo- plastic bottle. That's true. So, you know, if I throw... Uh, I'd rather get hit with the plastic bottle. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's true. If you're <laughs> going to throw something at me, I'm sure hoping it's going to be a plastic bottle. What they need to do, and I think what something like this will make them do baseball, is going to lean on them to just change... Have a beer, but just pour it into a glass. Mm-hmm. Every other stadium in the in the country... Does it well? Not in our country, right. you know. In not, not their country, they only have one team. But that's the point: is that they're going to have to switch to, you know, a, a glass. Serve it in a glass. You want to have your six and a half percent, you know, by volume, uh, lager. Put it in a in a plastic cup because that's uncalled for. I, 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 and I, you just never think about that when you think it. You're talking uh, Canadians. You never say, you know, those scumbag Canadians. You Mm-mm. never say that. Mm-mm. It's always, you know, you know, the north, uh, the sub, the southern uh, family that's always the douchebag. Right. You know. I think it's just the fact that they're the only ones. That, if we served booze Thank you. in metal cans, Evan, it'd be pandemonium. Can you imagine a game in San Francisco or the Raiders? You know, can you imagine a Raiders game with a bunch of beer cans? Come on, it's that's that's North American. Uh, that's a Colombia Argentina soccer match. Well, yeah. if you're from the Midwest and you come prepared, you bring golf balls with you. Battery uh, chuckers. Yeah, I was gonna say Boston with their batteries. Yep. Uh, the Raiders used to end uh, the Raiders the the Denver game when they played the Raiders they were sticking batteries in the snowballs <laughs> and uh, I remember that game. Is that not allowed? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's frowned upon. They had class. They had they had D batteries. Jim Rome had a field day with this probably oh man, fifteen years ago, yeah, twenty years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. And they were jamming you know D batteries in snowballs and, and giving it a go. Good time. Boston uh, at Cleveland. Price is on the mound for for Boston. They're I don't know. I don't. He's think, not a postseason. No, he's not a postseason guy either. I don't like them winning that game at all. Uh, really good matchup. Kershaw versus Scherzer. I like Kershaw in that matchup. I have, I think Dodgers going to Washington and win. I had a daily baseball team that I put together. That's why I said too low. That's the real reason. Let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I you know I sit back last night and, and put my team together and try to have some kind of logic. Um, to it Monday with the wild card game, man, I almost sent you something that I knew, I knew it was going to be too sensitive. So I just, I let it go. Mm-hmm. I, I got beat on a walk off. I had Baltimore with a run and a half and it was tied in the ninth inning, 10th inning, 11th inning. And you know, they, I'm telling the company that I'm with the only way I can lose this. And it wasn't just for a Slurpee. I, I, right. I made a stand on this game. Right. And I had Baltimore in money line, but I said, you know, I'll take the run line. Plus, it was minus 150, so it's 150 bucks to win 100. Right. It's a good bet right. with getting the run and a half. The game's tied. It's in, to- it's in Toronto, so all they take is a run, and they win. Mm-hmm. And here comes Eddie. Oh. And he raked. And that was, I mean, the only way that I'm going to get beat was the way I got beat. Right. And so that was a, a bad taste in my mouth. Farewell, Baltimore. Can't stand those guys. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, for the most part. Uh, the wild card, because it was top of the ninth. It was a walk off. Yeah, you know that that yep, was a walk off. It. it was it. that was that was tough to deal with. But the the Mets game, you know, the the big number was six. There was no way that game was going to get to three. I thought that got yeah. to five or five and a half at something. One, I, one I got side, it at six, 
and was Shh, elated stupid. that I had it at six. Yeah. I, I put <laughs> my son's picture <laughs> on, a, on a dollar bill of, of a certain value and made that play. That was a really easy bet. And I, I, I felt for you when, you know, he raked and it was of all the guys, you know, it's that Mark Lemke, no, no. you know, it's that guy. And it was Gillespie that, that did you. <sighs> Dodgers game is at six. That Dodgers game, Kershaw, I think he's going to finally shake the demons and the ghosts of his postseason. Yeah. And Washington is, they're struggling. They're, they're not struggling. They do not have the firepower. If you want to play him, now's the time to play him to beat Hit- him. Good pitching beats good hitting. And in the, the yeah. postseason, in the postseason, it really shows up. Mm-hmm. You're going to see Scherzer and Kershaw tonight. Does Kershaw give up back-to-back home runs? No. Oh, um, does Scherzer give up back-to-back home runs? You'd be lucky to get one off of them. Th- one of those guys Th- those two are going to have a dozen are gonna strikeouts. going to walk into their, their dugouts and say, somebody hit the effing ball, please. It's just like Thor, and it was just like Bum the other night. It's, it's, it's part so... two tonight yeah. with, with Max and, and you know, Clayton. And Bum Gardner is a fantastic pitcher, I'm not saying anything about it. But he didn't pitch as good as Thor did that night. And to, to have Thor with the loss because of oh, – just... You know, he may not have had the good – his. No one got on base. Oh, no, they both did fantastic. Like, I'm not saying that. But, to, you know, when you say, you know. Uh, Noah did better than Bum did absolutely. through seven innings. Bum was able to close out a game where Noah, his his control started to slip a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, he was so quick. Terry was so quick to. You know, sit him, you know, he, the, but you're, but you're, he just got off the inning. You sit him down. You give him a couple pitches. See how he turns out. Then replace him. You don't just. It was a I'm not jerk. one to. Unless. I, I don't like to automatically replace it while you go to the break because you want to see mm-hmm. give him a couple minutes to relax the national league you out. got a, you got a bat coming up you got the pitcher coming up and those are, they may have made a, a knee jerk reaction but i'm telling you all that to tell you that i stalled you out that night because there was no oh man sorry bro or ha 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 no text was going to be received well so i just <laughs> let that ship sail off into the sunset you know what i got to say too and I, there must i got the thing from him and immediately afterwards, my phone died. And I'm like, and I was like, Ooh, God damn it. that eerie? And I'm like, that might be a, you know, that might be a good thing. Did you and guys, then I popped it up the next day and there was all kinds of shit on there. Did you guys pick your your winner from, you know, the whole deal? Did you pick a World Series no. winner yet? Or, no, yeah, you know, no, something no. like that? I'd but be curious to hear what, based what you on had this, to say. Now that, now, I took Mets. <laughs> yeah. So I would have been out anyway. I was, I was saying whoever uh, between the Mets, Mets and the and Cubs. Cubs. Yeah, yeah, I said the same thing. That's, that's where we were at. Uh, for National League, American League, I was riding my Tigers into the into the uh, wild card. You you believe, Brian, and you actually give. I don't believe in. I'd have to say cert- Cleveland. Certain guys pitch well, day games, night games, right. whatever. You know, you watch Bum do exactly what he has done previously, and just own stuff on the road. So, Some guys pitch better in the heat than the cold. That's a fact. Who? is left that has something to offer like that. San Francisco wins championships in even years. Yep. That's weird. 2012, three 2014. Of them, three of them. They've won championships in the last three even years. So it's an even year. You laugh about it and chuckle about it. Go back and take a look. So, you know, that's kind of a gypsy nomad, you know, uh, Weird superstition Romanian thing, yeah, yeah. but you can they, they beat they beat the Mets. You like yeah. we all like the Cubs on the National League. Uh, yes, yeah. It, it, for me, it came down to the Cubs and Mets. Whoever won At that this series, point, I'm a Cubs fan. Uh, San Francisco can, but I wouldn't my count ass. out the Dodgers either. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm a Madden fan, so I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I wouldn't count out San Francisco. Yeah. I, if you're going to give a dark horse, and this I is think best of five to too. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Since you shorten it down, it's Cubs disadvantage. It is because Cubs, I think, because let team. them let them split in Chicago, and that goes back to San Francisco. The 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 Mets Ooh. scored their what fifty one percent of their runs on home runs. Oh God, yeah, I think so. Counting something like that, yeah, it's over fifty percent. The good pitching, I, I, I ADD off my point. The the good pitching beats good hitting. The and Mets smashed home runs all year and smashed runs everybody. all year, and they got the case of the hush mouth because the guy knows how to throw a baseball. Mm-hmm. And in postseason, that's all you get is good pitchers. You don't get these schlebs. And you, Be- in the Cubs, 
get a San Francisco team that had the best record on the road. Do you remember when I talked about the Mets that they had the four games left and they broke ten? They were doing a, a, a 11, 11. 1, uh, 11. 5 11 runs a game, runs yeah. per game. And I said if they get forty two, then I was going to do something else. Uh, those last four games, they put up twenty runs. I, I had them at you know? twenty four. I think so. I that said. means that was sixty nine, seventy. They put up eighty nine runs in the last ten games that's of the year. Just so much. That's so that's many. So runs. ridiculous. But it's not. Yeah, and and it wasn't Kershaw, and it wasn't Scherzer, and it wasn't Arietta, and it Lester. wasn't. You know, it wasn't those guys. Man, you, now you have Lester and you have Jake, and I'd take those two pitchers in a five game series because you get to see them. You're going to see three starts involve those two pitchers, right? Um, Baumgartner. And Cueto, Matt Moore is man. I well, Cueto gets the nod tonight right. because you know Bumgarner just had his outing there, and he'll be back for game. He'd be back for you know, maybe, maybe if it goes four. Mm-hmm. I think the uh, the Cubbies game is going to go five. I think they win in five. Cubs in five. The Cubs in five. You got to go with with history. Even year, that's a factor, and San Francisco on the road. Man. Well, if you go with history, then nobody who's not ever won will ever win. How about the wild card has been represented in the championship game? Yeah. That's true. Nine right. of the last 12 years yeah, or something too. like that? That's true. So and it, those are just hard things to yeah. – they all have to be put in that blender. I'm not a big superstition guy. I can't believe that San Fran's going to win because it's an you know even year. That's nonsense. Last year, did the Cubs have to win the wild card? Yeah, I think they just. Yeah, the Cubs had to win the wild card. Were they wild card last year? I think so. It's yeah. Still, yeah. And now it's starting to, to spill over into the other sports where it's the wild card. Go look at NFL. The, and I handicap this stuff. But you know, you know how it happens though, because originally you, they never have a chance. But then once or twice somebody wins, and they're like, "Holy crap, you can actually win that way!" Right. So let's say you know instead of being down that they're in there, they're excited to be able to get in there. Right. You know that's that momentum. Oh, we it's just not barely how you start, made it. How you no, that's not the way it is. You right. made it in. Right. Now make it happen. And that's where San Francisco has to. If you're a San Francisco fan, you have to believe like that. They vomited on themselves in the second half of the of the of the the season. They had the best record at the beginning of the season, and they train wrecked the second half. But they managed to pull it together. We all talked about this a month ago, where San Francisco had to stop the bleeding and find a way to win and close out strong. And then the last week of the season, they did, they did exactly that. Right. So yeah. now it's 0-0. Zero and zero. They're, they're in, and they have as much to do in this playoff as any other team. It's short memory, and they need. that's what Matt needs to think about, Matt Moore. And that's what you know. those other pitchers, they have to think about that. Matt can't think, man, I, I was a mess. He has to think, man, I, I, I have a chance to – to do something special. Let's watch to make somewhere. good. I have well, a chance to make good. Yep. On that note, and almost in closing here, uh, who wins the Toronto-Texas series? I liked Texas last night I before like... the game started. But they're down 2 nothing at this point, right? Uh, no. They're one nothing. one nothing. I would still – I'm still going to say Texas. Texas? I, yeah. I think Toronto wins that series. I was going to take Texas even if there were two. Boston I'd take a Texas. Boston and Cleveland. I like Boston in that series. I would like to see Cleveland win. I'm, I'm pulling for Cleveland. And I'm taking two teams that have already lost a third of what they need to to yep. get kicked out of the, of right. the playoffs. Dodgers but. and the Nationals. Dodgers. Yeah, and the Dodgers, Dodgers. pitching staff. And San Francisco, and Chicago. you got Dodgers on top. On top of it. You've got uh, Madden, who's just smooth as the other side of the pillow, baby. I, I'm going to say Chicago and Cleveland in the World Series. You know, I would I would like to see that game. Uh, neither one of them have been in for forever. Uh, what Cleveland last time they were there was uh, ninety six, no ninety five, I believe. They lost to the Mets. Jarrett Wright, right? Is yeah. that the last time? Um, Cliff Lee was is on that, that correct? Team. Right, that's correct. Right, mm-hmm. I'm right. On, I'm right on that. Right. Yeah, ninety five against the, the the Braves. The Braves got their only World Series win ever. CC Sabathia, Cliff yep. Lee. Jared Wright, that crazy you you at uh, they, I said you like you're a Yankee fan. Uh, the, they they have they picked him up. Yes, that that was the team. Yep, absolutely, sure is. All right, well there we How go. How about that? Some baseball knowledge, bang. And I can't bring that. myself to say the Cubs. No. Colorado this weekend, real quick. I was going to say my upset of the weekend. Colorado was getting nine points on Monday. They're now now to five and I, a half. I'm riding out the home team. Let's go Arkansas. Let's go Razorbacks. Down goes Bama. I'd like to Down order goes whatever Bama. drink that, that uh, Brian Gould's drinking. <laughs> Colorado Moneyline plus, te- plus Game 19. day is Rum Tennessee and, and Texas A&M. 
but oh well. There you go. Another day. You guys have a great weekend. I know I'm going to try. Stay I, dry. Yeah, I got stuff to do. Too much stuff to do. You sound Sock stressed. Girl. Already, man. I'm not looking forward to it. Fix that song. And you got to blow out of here, right? You're not going to be here for the... Uh... Yeah, gonzo. So you need to come up with three outfits then. We'll figure that out soon enough. For Jay, Evan, Murdoch, I'm your host, Brian. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition. We'll see you guys next week. I'm gay. <laughs>